advanced positions as the deployment and rapid reinforcements as the condition. And uh, Kyle, I brought you on because you're an expert at Mall B2s. Um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think Bobby Joe's chances are against a list like Double T Forty Seven? What does he got to watch out for? Uh, I mean, you know, being red is not ideal. Um, Mall B Twos really wants to be blue, but you know, here we are. I, I have the same <laughs> problem in my game as red player. He's got bombing run. Um, I'll be curious to see. It looks like bombing run was in the first slot. I'll be curious to see afterwards what the veto situation was to end up there. I think maybe Bobby had to um, veto disarray. That's kind of what it looked like. There were yeah. definitely two flips in the one category. Yeah. Um, I'll be curious to see where he, where uh, he puts his bombs. Um, you know, because clearly bombing run against like two T-47s is, is bad, but at least with double T-47, you know, you got to put the third bomb on something and deliver it somehow. It's not like a triple stop list. Um, so Bobby Joe's best shot is probably to, uh, you know, stop that third bomb while kind of slow walking his bombs over to the other deployment zone. How easy is it to do that slow walk? Um, it's probably a lot easier to do it when you're against T-47s because they don't really stop you except to shoot you. I've always found that with a T-47 list, there's not a lot of board presence of those 47s. They can't really influence what happens on the ground too much other than just by shooting. I guess they can block a little bit with their base, but at the same time, it's like, I can just walk through you, man. Yeah, I, I mean, the shooting is definitely a thing, especially against droids who have white saves and generally rely on cover. T-47s are really good at just kind of flanking that cover and, you know, dumping somewhere between four and six hits into a white save unit. Um, so while they can't physically block like a, like a, a AA-5 can, they certainly can do some real damage to those white saves, even to B-2s. And there's a little bit of a key difference here for this for this match that we had that we didn't have in the last one, in that you had to deal with some Wookiees that were inside the bus as yes. well. And ar <laughs> arguably that was the thing that was, you know, kind of the tipping point for you. Uh, but, not arguably. A uh, lot of Wookiees yeah. pretty much solo killed them all. So. <laughs> this is true. Um, there's a little bit of a softer underbelly to this list. Yeah, definitely. There, there's a couple more activations, and there's more firepower, direct firepower with the T-47s. But if one takes some wounds earlier, if one goes down, there's not really a lot left. There is Cassian and K2 with it, but they don't have as much volume of dice as the Wookiees. They're going to be relying more on the chip shots that Bobby Joe can probably deal with. Yeah, I mean, uh, the ideal scenario for Bobby Joe would be that Bruce gets a little aggressive with those T-47s, and he can take some range two HA shots and maybe a saber throw in there too, and if he can drop those T-47s, yeah, like you said, there's not much to the rest of the list. you got a, a naked rebel gun line against you know, droids of Maul. Seems so fine. Yeah. Yeah. Does does Maul have saber throw in this list? He, he does. does. He does. Okay, so there's little, there's really no problem that, that Bobby Joe is gonna have killing a T forty seven that flies too far too far forward. If they get too close then yeah. Yeah, it's just gonna be shots all the way down. Yep. And, and just uh, from watching your last game, I think one of the things that struggle you struggled with with killing the bus was the shields. There was just some extra wounds that went in there, right? Yeah. T forty sevens don't have that. No, they don't have shields deals. and they have less health, so yeah, they definitely drop faster than an AA-5 does. I wonder what the, we're going to see out of the Mark II blasters this game. Uh, advanced positions with recon is, you know, really kind of great for Mark IIs, but I don't know if uh, Bruce is going to put many orders on them. I think he's going to want to control his T-47s, and the sort of lack of uplink there is a little, a little weird. And, and lately we've seen that sometimes veterans are dropping their 26-point heavy weapon in favor of a Comtech and an uplink for 19. So not only do you save five points, you also have really good order control suddenly because you have coordinate that's being uplinked every single turn. Um, it's a way to sort of chase your uh, core tokens that you'd rather not pull out of your order pool and uh, save your, it kind of gives you a little bit more um, freedom to choose targets with your command cards and then not feel like you're just uh, you're just sort of uh, blindly pulling from the bag, hoping for the the next thing. But uh, rebellions are built on hope. So <laughs> there you go. So uh, we're we're replacing hope with technology at this rate. <laughs> I think that's a veteran who's doing a recon intel plus advanced positions. That, that would explain the scout two move there. I think from that unit up in the very top. All right. It looks like a B two and a vet. Or I'm sorry, a B two and a Mark two have been held back. B2 and a Mark II, okay. So what are you expecting to see out of deployments here with advanced positions, Kyle? 
Uh, well, if I were Bobby Joe, I would probably try and shove my B2s, um, like, you know, start him in that corner there where he's, where he's got his hand right now and um, scout him up behind that building. Um, and, you know, because you want to, with B2s and Maul, against the Rebel list like this, you want to basically try and play on a 3x3. Three three. Um, he looks like he's putting some B1s behind that building, which is good because you don't want to, um, you know, expose your B1s to T47 fire. But if he can basically make this like a 3x3 three three match, you know, that's always your primary objective when you're playing ball B2s against a squishy-ish rubble list. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you, he even has the same board edge that you had in your last game. Yep. You are going to say it goes walking. I'm sorry I interrupted Oh, you. no worries. I was just going to ask, what are you looking to do for your bomb carriers? Is it your three B2s? Are you looking to put it on a BX potentially with the scale and the scout three and maybe get it there a little quicker? I'd probably put it on the B1s just because... Um, you know, B2s need to be shooting things and occasionally recovering. Giving them bombs is like too many things to do. Okay. Um, B1s are, you know, a little more flexible moving and shooting or even double moving. It's not like the end of the world if, you know, they don't get to shoot on a given turn. Um, so I'd probably put them on the B1s. You know, seven wounds is like they melt when you shoot them. But, um, you know, you want your opponent not shooting your B2s. Right. Uh, so if you put them on the B1s, then they have to either shoot the scoring unit uh, or they have to shoot your B2s. They can't do both at the same time. That makes sense. Smart. And with seven health in the pool, by the time that they do finally kill one of the squads, you have enough time to get something over there and pick it up as well. Right. One would hope. Reminds me of one of those like list building practices where you don't put a medic in the same squad as a heavy weapon. It's the same principle, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah, force your opponent to make some target priority uh, decisions. Yep. So what tables did you play on today? Or I guess over the last couple of days. Kyle? Yeah, yesterday. What tables did you play on? Uh, hmm, let's see. I played on played on one of the Hoth tables. Um, I played on one of those Jedi Temple tables that has like the uh, half semicircle. Oh, nice. And then um, the third table I played on. Uh, I don't really know how to describe it. It had some ruins and um, like a reasonably large. Oh, structure you played on with... the Lord of the Rings table, I think. Yes. Yes. It was. It's like three tables down there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of them against buses. Uh, <laughs> I've played against six buses in four games. Oh my gosh. You managed to take out five? Um, yes. Exciting. Well, well technically, technically, it took out technically six. all six yeah. died. Yeah, I did yeah. kill six buses, uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, in vain in the last instance. Uh, yeah, a lot of buses, all the buses. Right, because you had a Jedi Luke bus the first game, and yep. then two doubles, right? Yep, two doubles, one with fleets, one with Wookiees. What scared you more? Definitely the Wookiees. The Wookiees? Okay. Yeah. Were they loaded Wookiees both times? Yeah. Or were some of them naked? No, they were loaded. Okay. Um, yeah, the fleets, I mean, certainly they're cheaper and you can fit other stuff in there. Like, you know, he had the um, the quad lasers on the buses. Um, but with a list like Malby 2s, you know, you can just you can just delete the fleets pretty easily. Uh, the Wookiees are an entirely different story. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Where do yeah you, you, you just shoot the fleets once and they, they pop. Yeah, yeah, basically. Where do you sit on naked Wookiees and buses? I could see it. Um, I mean, a lot of times when you're running the bus, the bowcaster is mostly just for the extra melee dice. Um, you know, you save some points, you can spend them on that quad laser, you can spend them on some other stuff. I think it's perfectly defensible. I really like the bowcaster just because against those red save armies, right? you sometimes want to be shooting anyway. Like, clearly they have duelist in, me in melee now, which helps considerably. Um, but a lot of times you can't quite get into melee, and those range two shots actually uh, can be pretty nasty with that bowcaster in there. So, especially with the aims that you're getting from tactician. Exactly. See, that's yeah. my thinking with the fleets too. Is like if they're getting close enough to me to drop off wookies, my fleets are going to pop out and throw something, and throw something big their way. And so, like, I don't need to be in melee. I can I only have to be at range two. I don't have to dive my bus completely in there to, to be effective. That's that's just my feeling. So here's the top down view again. We've got uh, some Mark II action in the center here. We've got a mess of B1s behind the buildings in the lower the lower right hand. We're gonna be looks like we're using a lot of the right hand side of the table so far. Hooray. Uh, first T47 is up in the in the uh, panhandle. Interesting place to put it. Certainly an aggressive deployment. Yeah, very yeah. aggressive. And we actually I'm gonna talk a little bit quieter here, so I apologize, Chad. We saw this aggressiveness really hurt him in game in game three of the Swiss yesterday, and um, you know he fell to the tank because the 
the rebel troopers were just too far forward and they got chewed up. So now that there's a similar level of firepower on the side of the table again, history might repeat itself because these B2s have blast. They do. So there's a very real chance that they're one-shotting a lot of these units. Yeah, and you definitely can't underestimate the B1s with heavies either, especially in right. turns where you can get them aggressive tactic surges. Right. They can very easily push three to four hits, you know, on a rebel, naked rebel trooper squad and, um, you know, do a significant amount of damage there. So An E5C plus a BX sniper shot is more than enough to kill four white saves. Yep, usually. Yeah, we'll see. I think... Um, I think if he is really aggressive with these T-47s, it's going to play right into Bobby Joe's hands. Of course, he does have 11 activations, so he could potentially, like, on the last activation, drop off a bomb and blow up a bunch of B-1s with it, right. which would certainly be bad for Bobby Joe. Right. Um, and maybe that's what he's looking to do. He's just going balls to the walls. I'm just going to hit you with your entire army with three red dice. Um, that's always... You know, when, whenever you can get both a victory point and kill half your opponent's army at you know, once, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like that's, a good trade. That's a good strategy. Seems like yeah. an excellent, an excellent uh, idea. I gotta, I gotta ask you guys a question about Rex. Sure. Okay. Do you, you think a list? Do you think a list like Dubax would have made it this far if Rex was more prevalent in this tournament? I, I'm not sure, personally. Well, I, let's let's caveat that. Okay. Competitive Rex was present. Uh huh. Because we saw a lot of like seven and eight activation Jedi and Kid Rex combinations. So a lot of like flavor, lists, right? Yeah. A lot of like fluff, not a lot of like but true Rex star. Right. Yeah. The yeah. sort of the sort of like ten activation phase twos arcs Rex. Right. Yeah. yeah. I that think it would have been harder to get it. That was largely yeah. absent from this tournament. We we only had two, I believe, show up. I'm a fan of saying that the community voted that list off the island in much the same way they voted Tauntauns off the island. Yeah, it's... These units have a stigma. They do, and it's not like... It's not a super fun list to play either. I guess it depends on your perspective. I That's like true. It. Yeah. It's fun. Um, I like rolling lots of dice. But, you know, there's, there's also new fun things out there like the AA5s that are also really good yeah. and are different and don't have that same stigma associated with them. So uh, I think a lot of people, especially out here in Texas, I guess armor is really popular in general. So I think a lot of people sort of pivoted to the Rebel Heavy lists, and um, that's why you don't see as much Rex star. Rex also has, like, standard Rex builds, um, unless you are pretty lucky with, like, fire supports on Rex or with your arcs critting. They don't have a lot of play against vehicles, and I mean, like, arcs by themselves cannot take down, like, many vehicles, I think. Unless they're critting every single turn, time they shoot, which is not guaranteed. It's not. Um, I will say, in practice, though, I have not had a problem with it over, like, a sample size of 12 to 15 games. You just... But I also have a fourth critical gun in there with a DC, so there's a little bit of just, you know, extra crit floating around. But I also didn't get a chance to play against too many of the gonk buses. A lot of the buses I was shooting didn't have the gonks on there, or they died in a turn from a fire support, so they didn't really get to maximize that. But it's definitely a little bit of an uphill battle, but it's it's very possible to kill white save armor with Rexstar still. It's going to require you to not make mistakes with your positioning, though. It also requires fire support in a yeah, large, large it parts, does. which is sort of like... It's gross, because you're probably already down to like 10 or 9 active. And you right. don't feel good fire supporting against, like, say, a 12 act or 11 act air speeder. Right. It's risky. It, it is. There's a lot of. You've got to make sacrifices with it, and you need. It's going to play a little bit differently where if you're playing a lot of Rex previously and you're used to losing, like, six models a game, you might lose six models in a turn, but you're going to trade that squad for a bus, and now when that armor's gone, you can kind of just squeeze the envelope yeah you're feeling a lot better once that once those uh big support pieces like buses are off the table right yeah and a lot of rex star players recently have been running one rps rocket in there um which is really it's a great fire support starter uh against those vehicles because you're talking about impact to you know you can fire support like an arc strike with it and get critical one in there too and you're you're talking about a long-range fire support attack that you're probably doing three to four damage to a vehicle on. Right, and it's got lethal so, in it. And it has lethal, so. Yes, these are top cut. You're in the, we're witnessing the top floor right now. 
one of the top, one half of the top four. The other half is uh, uh, David Hoffman and Mike Jem. Mike Jem was on stream last game. Kyle, people say they're excited for you oh, to be that's, here. That's good. I'm excited to be here. I, uh, I, I love casting. It's not something I get to do very often, but um, sort of a blessing in disguise to be able to just drop and do right. this instead. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I just flew down here to do this. I figured it was going to be pretty fun. Yep. It has been. I got some Legion games in. I get to do some color commentary. I get to have my cake and eat it too, so I got no complaints. Sweet. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great weekend, and it's going to continue to be as we're here in uh, Allen, Texas for the Lone Star Open 2021, an event created by Frontline Gaming. So thank you, Frontline Gaming, for uh, having a Legion tournament as part of this. Looks like we have turn one command cards possibly getting dropped here, so we're going to go into the first turn of this game. Oh, your game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, me the, let me get the big dice up. Here we go. It's a nice Han For the flip, there. it's going to be Crack Shot turn one versus Orbital Strike from... Bobby Joe. It's actually a pretty exposed little spot for Rebel Troopers in the middle there for this Orbital Strike, if that's what he's going for. I have a feeling he is. Uh, orbital Strike is not, it's not an anti-vehicle thing at all. It has no, nothing to give it good stuff against vehicles, and it's just, uh, it's suppressive as well. Yeah. It's kind of a crappy dice pool, but it's unlimited range, so it's hard to complain about a crappy dice pool if it's unlimited range. That's definitely true. So a two red, two black, I believe? Yeah. yeah. I usually don't play it, quite honestly. I tend to like the consistency of pushes order control. Uh, Federale, Andy, I think that the T47-A5 combo is stronger. Um, the T47s by themselves certainly can generate a lot of threat, but once, you know, we talked about this kind of in the, in the pregame, once you get rid of those T47s, there's not really much to it. Uh, whereas the AA5 T47 combo with the Wookiees, you've still got a lot of beef, even if your opponent can deal with that AA5 and or that T47, so. Now they actually didn't put their bombs down, so they're putting them down now. So I see one attached to Maul, looks yeah, like. Yeah, I'm gonna go look at the table, I'll be right back. One, at least one's attached to Maul. I'm sure one, this one up here is a T47 bomb. There's a couple of others. Which unit? K2. Yeah, you can't put a bomb on K2. Yeah, you can't put a bomb on K. So, we have a slight problem that he only has two bomb carriers right now. He didn't leave, he, he did not leave a trooper unit in his deployment zone for the third bomb. Because he thought K2 could take the oh, bomb. Oh no. Yeah. That is, unfortunately, a common mistake. Okay, we're, uh, we're gonna be right back. We're, we're gonna run a little ad break while this is uh, being discussed, and we'll be back. Uh, stay tuned, please. Uh, Lone Star Open 2021. All right, okay. so we are back, yep. and we have a, a wild scenario here where on advanced positions, all of your units get scout. So, Bruce had only left three units inside the deployment zone, which were two T-47s and an incognito K-2SO. Due to the rulings with incognito, K-2 cannot be given a bomb at the start. Luckily, his Cassian infiltrated on top of a building just inside of his deployment zone. So Cassian is stuck on top of a building at the moment, but he does have a third bomb on the table. So three bombs are on the table, two of the T-47, and one is casting on top of the building. We're continuing to have a, a more uh, judge, judge conference in here. Sorry, I just leave the table. Oh, it's a, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that you did that. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so, right, so we are back. This to is a Cassian sniper, I think. Yes, it is. The 
the good news is, like we talked about, potentially like giving Cassian a, the bomb isn't the worst because with the T-47s wreck, wreaking havoc, you could just speed two move from turns like two through five to the bomb deployment zone. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly better than just only having two bombs on the table. Most definitely. Um, but it's, you know, it gives Cassian something additional to do, which he probably doesn't want to be doing. Right. So he's probably going to, like, clamber after this. Yeah. I think. Yeah, he has to start moving pretty quickly. Yeah, he's going to have to get out of there. And shooting with the rifle means he can't move this around at all. Well, you're correct, because it's cumbersome. Yeah. Is this, like, up for grabs? Do you, do you want water? Yeah, you, you take it. Yeah. Okay. Here. I don't know whose this is. This looks like it's unopened, though. Okay. <laughs> we should take some of their cats so he gets close to that. <laughs> yeah, do <laughs> I'd be interested to know that. All right, orbital strike coming back the other way. I wonder what he's shooting. Probably a veteran. Cassian. Might be shooting Cassie. Yeah, I guess if you suppress Cassie, Ooh, yeah, that's a good roll. That's good, good roll. defense roll. We've seen very good white defense dice today. It's been, there have been some silly rolls. <laughs> yeah. There have been some silly white defense dice. Yeah. That was R2 that got hit. Okay. okay. And now R2 has two suppression. Yep. Is actually good. Like we kind of mentioned with the B2s before we got to, uh, dragged away there, they're pretty good at killing R2. Also, if you're going to force the issue with R2, a lot of their dice are capped at range too, so you can. It's a little bit easier to finagle a shot where you can just hit R2 yep. if you're limited to a range two gun with half of your models. Yep, exactly. Not that it's the easiest thing in the world, but it's it's definitely possible. Yeah, B2s are really good at killing R2 in general for a really variety good at killing of reasons. Everything. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once they get close enough. And I very much hope that. Uh, Bruce isn't thrown off his game because he's made some really smart plays today. He really has. I mean, so. let's let's be let's be honest. Bruce is the submariner today. He yeah. he is the two and one who he came is. back into the top eight and is now in the top four. So he is there he's continuing the trend of uh, submarining his way into that potentially into a finals here. Yeah. yeah. And we're actually like a decent bit of time into this round. I'm gonna go over and see how our other semifinal game is doing. Okay. Yeah, you can check it out and give us a, a little report from the other table. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to recover, it's just you have to choose between moving and shooting with the cumbersome weapon. And you can't shoot cumbersome and then move um, because that's how cumbersome reads, which I find is really punishing. But it makes sense. I, I think cumbersome would be a lot easier if you could shoot and then move rather than having to choose completely between moving and shooting. It would be a little less ridiculous. <laughs> Does anyone know why strength of schedule is used instead of victory points for the cut? You mean a uh, MOV? Because uh, because it's better. Because it's just better. <laughs> yeah, because it's better. Because uh, MOV is just reverse uh, strength of schedule, right? It is, yes. yeah. Uh, I think the actual um, answer is because we still have no software that does MOV in the Legion method. Yeah, I think that's the real answer is TTO um, that, doesn't doesn't do it how Legion is supposed to do it. That's that's what we did for ACO, at least, because we didn't have time to sit down and calculate it. Yeah, plus we don't want to have to do extended MOV math, as R1H4 is correctly pointing out. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, no thanks. Ta table 2 is very interesting at the moment. What's going on over so there? So one of the safe boxes, both, all the safe boxes have been claimed um, okay. by Naked Rebel Troopers. And then on the other side, one by IRG and one by Naked Shore. There is currently a melee on the middle box with two Dewbacks, a Wookiee, and Lando. <laughs> Lando in a melee? Yes. Ouch. With Dewbacks. Interesting. I'm That's not good. I'm assuming that he infiltrated Lando. Yeah, he must have. And then have. the Dewbacks probably knew ways turn one and Just ate him. Right in their face. <laughs> yeah. um, um, um. Well, that's how that's how Dubax win is people let them do stuff like that. Right. That's something you can't avoid if you measure. That's a here's a fun question. Um, Velo is is Doc on Discord, right? Doc Velo. Yeah, Doc yeah. Velo. So, what is the official ruling then when we get official events? Is the FFG floor rules coming over to AMG? Do we have any word on that? I don't think so. so as far as I'm aware, it's still separate. 
I, I mean, I think that's currently an unanswered question simply because there's been no official AMG okay. events. That's what I thought. I, I think culturally it's sticking around just because it's nice to have. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to just say, this event follows the FFG floor rules outlined here, and then you just link it in a PDF, and then it becomes the rules. Right, and players are used to it. Yeah, and players are used to it, exactly. It's a, you know, there's no reason the holdovers don't hold over until we hear otherwise from AMG. Right. right? We have to wait for orders from the mothership, so to speak. I thought my 5G chip was supposed to work for that. <laughs> <laughs> you are vaccinated, right? Yes. Okay, well, just, just be patient. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the orders will be delivered to your brain shortly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, did we uh, sort out where the droid bombs are? No, Why don't we I didn't. Go and check? Thank you. I think one's on Mall, but I'm not sure. Oh uh, yes, I did forget to grab that. <laughs> uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn, that was a mis he told me formally that that was a mistake. It bangs he didn't rocket. mean to, he didn't mean to choose that in the vending machine. Peach mango sounds kind of good right now. Though. It does. I like I like uh, peach mango flavored stuff. So I do peach mango green tea. That that's that's really good. It looks like the bombs are on two B ones and on all. Okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. It's sure dumb when you go undefeated at a local and strength the schedule says too bad you lose. Yeah, that's because you don't do enough rounds. That's that's why that even happens. Is because you don't do four rounds. Yeah, I mean, and frankly, MOV can also just say too bad you lose in the same way. Like, yeah. MOV is an illusion of control. It's not a... Sorry, I played Luke and Kyle back to back. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's also like, and what we what we even did was, uh, uh, I don't know, never mind. It doesn't make sense. That's right. It's a flavor of, it's a flavor of crystal light. <laughs> <laughs> AMG FFG fall under the Asmodee umbrella. I don't see why AMG couldn't ask FFG to use the floor rules. Yeah, that's fair. They could just ask FFG, hey, can we borrow this? And then just put their their letterhead on it. New branding, Looks yeah. like he's shooting MK2 here with a range 2 B2 shot. Nice. Yep. Just declared it shoot range 2. With the This blast. is going to be brutal. This could be very bad for that Mark II's health. see six pieces of paint there. Me too. That's a lot of paint. <laughs> and no surges, crucially. Right, oh, there's one lied. surge. There's, there's a surge. Okay, Looks okay. like two surges, actually. Yep. So it's just five. It's survivable. Yep, so five saves for that uh, Mark, Mark II. Survivable. Yep. Nice roll. He's alive. As I said. <laughs> Yeah, that, that extra wound they got a year ago is huge. It that was really huge. Is. I mean, Can you they, believe that was a year ago? It feels like yesterday. Yeah. It does. <laughs> they were borderline useless at three wounds. They were. Don't tell me to in that. <laughs> they just got instantly <laughs> killed without that extra wound. And now the least they can tank a little bit. Yes, that was a blast. Remember when a certain world champion was saying Tauntaun should be three health each? I do. Yeah. No. No thank you. <laughs> I'd be fine if Tauntauns and... Uh, yeah. Dubacks were just deleted. We're never. Game. We're just never released. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The That's fair. The major makes a good point here. Those B twos now are very open for the remaining Mark II and the T forty seven. Yeah, definitely. Although I think he wants to get these T forty sevens on bomb duty as quickly as possible. Yeah, right. I think that's really key here. Is is the quite literally the bombing run of these T forty sevens? They're going to live up to their name, hopefully and not get a shot down before delivering their bombs. When was the last time I saw a Tauntaun on the table? Um, actually, here. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yesterday, here, a certain, a certain is, uh, is Boticus was playing Triple Taun bus. And there's also, in the redemption bracket today, there's a Triple Taun double T-47 list. <laughs> yeah, and I actually think... Uh, I mean, you can you can run like triple ton, double bus. That's okay. a thing you can do. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I can't imagine you would ever have a game go past like turn three, just because your all your activations take like ten minutes because you're displacing displacing everything. Um, 
certainly if your goal is to create a miserable experience for your opponent that you could that you could do with such a list yeah there's um a local playmate of mine has been messing around with triple ton bus wow b2 just made a double save against that mark two Oof. nice happens occasionally yeah, it does happen every so often you roll that one in one in a 36. That's the best part about white saves, expect nothing, and then, uh, you know, when you get something, it's like, hey! It's, yeah. like, a, it's like a Christmas present. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm expecting as a, to as opposed to, right. As opposed to expecting saves and then not getting them. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't worry, be happy, just don't have a defense roll until you have one. Infinitely better than watching, wow, high praise, dude. Infinitely better than watching the Olympics. <laughs> you know, I watch the Olympics because I want to hear what the casters say on there, and I gotta say, those, uh, those gymnastics casters, they really, they really can fill a dead. They really can fill dead air. <laughs> they really can. Yes, they can. Because I'd rather watch the gymnasts. You know, right. it's really a skill, but like they have to, uh, they have to fill the dead air, the dead time between uh, events. Um, why the hate for the dudes? I actually think the do Vader list is not that bad, especially in a meta like this where you have all these aggressive rebel lists. Um, it's essentially the Empire version of Luke triple tauntauns which was you know a top meta choice yeah. not so long ago uh, r11 uh, r1 warfare. h41 warfare with that right yep yeah with vader deuce no with uh, uh luke taunts luke taunts, oh, luke taunts that's yeah, right yeah so it's just the empire version of that just without the crucial part that is r2d2 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes um sure but you know you, you have vader you have the irg in there mm -hmm. um so it's it's a little different I don't know that it's necessarily like objectively worse, uh, and I think it's a good fit for a meta like this one where you have all these rebel lists with Wookiees and other aggressive vehicles and stuff in them. I tend to agree. Yeah, certainly you don't want to face like a Rex Star on an open table, but that wasn't a thing in this tournament. So, yep. Oh, it that win was pre R two. I apologize, R one. I had a rebel officer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there was a phase where Tauntauns didn't have R two D two. A pretty long phase, actually. Yeah. I remember that. It was 11 activation Commander Luke Triple Tons. Yeah, Luke with just a Rebel had Officer. Push. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's kind of like the Luke list I run. I actually drop Luke's third force power sometimes just because I'm like, I just want points elsewhere. Here's a here's a thought. You could run that nowadays and maybe put like burst of speed on Commander Luke. True. Uh, he's only got two force slots. Right. But in that list, he's only taken force push anyway. Yeah, I guess. I don't yeah. know. It's just that's an extra. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's, it's yeah, an extra three points. And... and I've got an extra 40 points for not having Jedi Luke to slot R2 in there. Commander yeah. Luke at 173. Yeah. That could be a deal. I'm not Maybe. saying it's going to be meta-defining, but I think it could be an option. I mean, he's not He's not terrible. No. no he's just he's, not Jedi Luke. He's not Jedi Luke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Master of the Force makes a huge difference on every Force user. Yeah. It does. Huge. And the, even the extra attack dice plus tenacity. Like, it needs the extra health. Yeah, right. The, the six black dice from its uh, lightsaber pool seems kind of lackluster now, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> oh, check this out. This airspeeder actually pivoted into the other direction. Interesting. He's really doubling down on that B2 right there. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to go probably a little bit farther to actually get a decent shot on them. Let's see if we got an angle from here. Yeah, he's, he's flanking that one that one B2 that pushed up. I wonder the if there's a uh, if he's got the HA in the back there and he's looking for a scope here. Not not the best. All three blacks coming up blank, converting one extra. Four down to three. He says. Ah, huh. he was at 797. He would have 800 reverse to speed. Interesting. Oh yeah, because these are hot shot T-47s. They are, yes. Right, it would cancel the cover and then... Yeah, it should be three with sharpshooter. Yeah, yeah three with sharpshooter. That's him back three. three. Nice, three, three blanks. It's going to do three wounds to those B-2s. Yeah, sh uh, T-47s could shred, shred B-2s. Did he snipe the heavy out? Oh, no, man. I don't think so, because there were two models back there. Oh yeah, there's two models back there, yeah. He almost sniped the heavy. Oh, they're asking line of sight now to determine what what is going to receive wounds. Yeah. 
That's yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll, he'll end up with two separate models that have one one off. Yeah, important to keep every model alive. Every model is adding dice, and that's really important. Yep. Especially in cut games where every every wound matters. <laughs> Yeah, you can do some sort of unintentional wound spreading shenanigans on multi-wound models like Wookiees and BTs. Yeah, it's really hard to do it intentionally because it, it depends on where your opponent drops their stuff. Sometimes you can force it based on the terrain, especially with sharp corners like on this terrain. It's the easiest, easiest to do. He's not sniping the heavy. Okay. Okay, so he's that heavy's alive. His two backs have a lot of wounds over there. Yeah, it's tough. You gotta. Is it a scrum over there with the Wookiees? It is. If I had to pick between Wookiees and Dubaks in a fist fight, I think I would pick the Wookiees. Me too. Because I think they just overwhelm the armor. Yeah. Especially with the Pierce. Yep. They've got more raw wounds too. Yeah. I mean, I think they could more kill. A, you could kill a Dubak a turn if you roll well. You and could. they roll poorly. Yeah. Like, like even average, you're probably doing like four to five wounds to a Dubak every swing. Especially with tactician aims. So, if I'm understanding correctly from my little absence here, that B2 squad was two models with single wounds on the models? Correct. Okay. Yep. Do we have a painting contest this tournament? Sorry? Do we have a painting contest this tournament? I don't think we had a painting contest. What we did have, though, was a car show. We did have a car show. That yeah. was kind of cool. Everybody put their, their painted vehicles on one table. It was really nice to see everyone's uh, hard work coming together. There was, like, some really cool examples. There was a Whataburger AA5 with uh, order number 66 on top. Yeah. Yes. And there was a, a cell shaded lat that looked like it was straight out of Borderlands. Yeah. Um, there was that training mode AAT, that white kind of looking AAT with the target symbols on it like it was part of a simulation. Uh -huh. It looked really cool. Yeah, there were some really cool vehicles. There were, what was there, 16 AA5s? 16, right? 14. 14 buses, 14. yeah. 14, okay. 14 buses out of 18 rebels. I think I, I think the uh, over-under survey on that was 13 and a half for AA5s, oh, so that's, really? that's like the perfect number. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Congrats to the betters. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think I took the over on 13 and a half, so. Okay. Oh, we did see the LVTT mobile. I think so. Yeah. I, I faced the Whataburger A5. That thing yeah. ran over a squad of B1s and then rolled four blocks on seven dice. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Barf. It has that kind of lacquer paint that reminds you of a Pinewood Derby, like sort of glossy finish. Yep. <laughs> it does. It's Pinewood true. Derby, that's great. Yeah, Pinewood Derby. It's been, been a long time. It's been a long there. Yeah. It's been a long time since I was in Scouts. <laughs> Man, I remember. Elementary school, the elementary school gym with that giant track. <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> All right, we've got an E5C shot here. Yep. I think I see two crits there. It looks like three crits and a hit. Three crits and a hit it is. What did he attack? Uh, yes, as a new player, the minivan. That's a Mark II that just got taken out. No, I think that was a, a, a vet unit. Oh, that was a vet unit. That's down to one model. Oh, they're down to a leader. Okay. Yeah. Veterans, they just don't tank. I mean, yeah, rebel rebel units in general. Who who joked? Someone was joking like they survived one more battle than the rebel troopers. Oh, that so was that's me. What that was you because yeah. that's why they're called veterans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the dudes on Hoth. You know how many fights have they really been in? You know? Yeah, probably not that many. Yeah. Maybe one or two. Yep. It's been a pretty quiet judge day. It has. Relatively speaking, yeah. Contrast to yesterday with all the bus related oh, judge calls. Yeah, there was many bus bus calls. <laughs> I was I think I was joking with you after the game. When we were sitting here, every now and then we would just hear judge from the back right corner, and we we're like, Oh, it's them again. Yeah, I think I had maybe ten I don't think that's an exaggeration, ten or more judge calls in that second game. And it wasn't even like that we disagreed on something. We just something happened that was a weird interaction with the bus and we just didn't know what to do. We're what like, even happens here? Yeah, what do we do here? I don't know. <laughs> what happens when a displaced unit has nowhere to go? I, I actually don't know what yeah. happens. Um, so I think it was ruled that they were like on top of a, of a, it wasn't a building, but it was on top of something sure. where um, 
they would have had to be displaced like down a level and basically they ruled that that was fine that we could put them like on the table surface instead of you know somewhere else but, yeah. okay. just one of many examples of a ridiculous bus related uh, what you're saying is I've never displaced so many units or had so many units displaced in a single game <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's that. That is that is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, we just didn't know. So yeah. Um. Veterans moving to the right there, trying to find B ones with the bomb. This is very hiding behind that crate there. There's two B one units with bombs hiding behind the crate of the middle middle right area of the screen. This is quite an aggressive rebel vet. Yeah, feeling some pressure maybe to do the damage. What happens? Oh, just one crit on those B1s, which they... They do have a surge, they surge, so they save it. Yep, they're fine. Shooting B1s with, like, naked rebel units feels pretty bad. Yeah, it's awful. How many moves did those naked rebels do to your B2s, by the way, over the course of, like, six rounds? I felt like every turn it was like, aim, shoot, here's a crit, here's a dead mod. I think it was maybe four. Okay. Um, three or four. It was definitely meaningful. Uh, most of the B2 destruction was at the hands of the T47, though. Okay. That is true. And the Wookiees. And the Wookiees. Yeah. We're going to have nightmares about freaking the Wookiees. Wookiees. Yeah. <laughs> you and Brad both. Yeah. Are you going to go home and open up buses this weekend? Uh, yeah, actually. I have a second bus that I have to put together. One of mine is painted. I have not yet picked up the second bus. I only have one. So. Same. I but think I, I'm going to combine it with a T47. Yeah, I might <laughs> give that a shot. I have a unit of fleets whose paint job I'm really dissatisfied with, so I'm going to strip them down and repaint them. I actually, I, I, I really am big in the T47 bus combo. I yeah. Think, I think the right quantity of buses is one, personally. Yeah. Um, as I just, someone that faced a lot of double bus lists today or, and yesterday. I just want to try the double because marksman with the double seems absurd. The but you might, you might be right. The fact that... Because I think there's a, there's some goofy combos you can pull with like a fire-supported Cassian pistol to list marksman into seven or whatever. Yeah. And like Lando with the Idiot's Array with the sharpshooter especially. Just, just tactician it out whatever, whatever your blanks are. Yeah. There's lots of good stuff there that you can you can want, you can work with. That's true. It's all it also with Cassian K2 R2 you can get to 11, which is a really good number yeah, in this game, in this current meta right now. Yeah. Since a lot of the mean activations were 10, so getting having 11 is actually really important, especially if you're transporting something. Just be able just being able to last out of a bus with the fleets or last shoot with K2. The trouble is, fire supporting kind of negates that advantage a little bit. But being 11, right, if I fire support, well, I'm just back down to 10 or whatever. And also, there's a chance they're down from 10 to 9. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. Eight dice with Lando's marksman and Pierce 1, Sharpshooter 2. Yeah. Got a pretty good chance of taking something. Like pretty that. pretty dirty. <laughs> Definitely like a scummy rebel combo. That's a rocket. Range 3 rocket shot here into those vets. Yep. Two after cover and no paint. Okay. So a couple of weak rebel squads right now. Yeah. But crucially for going into the next turn, no activations off there. Yep. That's huge. Yeah, T-47s need to uh, need to get in there. In One opinion. still has to go. Can it like go into the middle? It's a little bit blocked by its own Mark IIs. It is, because I don't think it can land, it can't land on those Mark IIs. Yeah. yeah, and you don't want it to displace those uh, bats either. Or K2. Right. Turn one. Turn one. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't that doesn't that feel great? Yeah. Oh. I wouldn't. Yavin base. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Texas man discovers FAQ on stream. <laughs> You're from Florida. Florida man. <laughs> He's from Florida now. Florida man discovers FAQ on stream. 
<laughs> just More at 11. I just myself. It's yeah. just yourself. I'm dissing myself. I'm happy being an eastern seaboard man. Yeah. 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 Mid Atlantic region. Yeah. Mid Atlantic region. <laughs> I escape most of the stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. Better than Mid Atlantean region. There you go. Be far into the ocean. Yeah. Some of us are good swimmers. Yeah? yeah. I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have no I have no follow up to that one. Stay alive, but not for too long. Alright. The trick is to blow air into your shirt after you tuck it into your <laughs> into your pants. Use that as a life preserver. Yeah. Is that a thing? That's a thing, yeah. Okay. That's a thing. Yeah. You can use the air bubble to float. It doesn't prevent you from being eaten by sharks, but it might keep it might you prevent for a little longer. Yeah, it might prevent you from drowning. Yeah, at least as quickly. Yeah. I think we had an earthquake move our setup. Uh, maybe. Maybe someone kicked it. I'm not sure. It's a little off center. It is a little one, a little lopsided. Yeah. I'm thinking of putting some sandbags down next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sand, sandbags on the bottom and double-sided tape on the dice tray. Yeah, yeah, that's that's some notes for next time. Double-sided tape on the dice tray. That's a good one. Yeah, just to keep it stuck in the in the right spot all, I, all tournament. I have been making a fool of myself on the internet trying to center that thing as David points, and I go in the wrong direction for like the last two days. <laughs> oh no, dude! I'm, I'm it's Keystone Cops. I'm like, you're low left, your other left. <laughs> and I'm going this way. I'm like, oh crap! North, north, north. Because it's in a mirror, but it's not. Right. Ugh. Fucking cameras. How do they work? Uh, the units of the bomb carriers. So we have the two T-47s at the bombs for the rebels, as well as Cassian on top of the building. Um, there's a little bit of drama there, but it is just to the left of the Lone Star open that you see on your screen now. Um, we had some misdeployments for what units are eligible for bomb carriers, and unfortunately Cassian is stuck up there with one at the moment. And then on the droid side, Darth Maul has a bomb, and two B1s that are pushed to the 3 o'clock section of your screen have bombs as well. Bobby Joe's actually doing a pretty good job here of being reasonably spread out, such that even if he gets like a scoring bomb detonation on one section of his army, it might only hit three or four units instead of the entire thing. Yeah, for sure. We thought that he might have been a little isolated on the right-hand side with that single B2, but he has quickly filled that flank nicely. Yep. Close that gap right up with B1s. Yep. Oh, and did, B1s with objective tokens. Did yes. Maul just take two wounds? He rolled... What was that? What Bobby that was? Joe rolled two red dice and they were two blanks. What else could that be? Uh, it could have been a BX sniper. Oh, that's true. It Take could have look. been a BX sniper droid. That's true. That makes more sense. I don't, yeah. It doesn't seem like there's anything that can shoot them all right now. Yeah. That was actually a, a blank sniper shot. Oh, a blank sniper shot. Okay. <laughs> Double blanks on the red. Yes. Ow. Oof. One in 64 Brutal. in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. Man has some like Cirillo look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Speaking of uh, of good stuff here, there's R2, double moving or single double moving across that pallet with the two suppression towards the advanced the advanced positions deployment zone. And actually, if you look, he rapid reinforced a veteran into uh, Bobby Joe's deployment zone on the right side of the screen. Yes, he did. And uh, that's going to be R2's escort. That seems super aggressive. I feel like he can. Like Bobby Joe can kind of just plaster that with that B2 unit he has over there. I agree, it's pretty open. It's very aggressive. Dave's been pretty good so far. Answer uh, Mamolian in chat. Yeah, it's been a great day. We're we're having fun here, we're relaxing, we're casting Legion, watching some pretty good games. Um, feeling like uh, Wookiees should get a nerf. <laughs> 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 Speak for yourself, my friend. I think hey, Wookiees, Wookiees are Wookiees. I love that Wookiees are good. Me too. Wookiees should be good. Yeah. It's a nice thematic Star Wars unit. They yeah. Except when you get torn apart by something like. It's better than an unorthodox tactician. I'd rather get torn apart by a Wookiee than a Tauntaun, personally. Um, yes, agreed. Tauntauns just feel like crap when you're getting torn to shreds by them. <laughs> Wookiees still do somewhat similar thing they just don't make you feel as bad when they right because it's it's supposed to do that right. well and just you know oh, it's, it's a, thematically oh it's thematically oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah right yeah because tauntauns you, you know they just get cold and die they get cold and die <laughs> yeah and they they look maybe it's just me but ha you know having watched like empire strikes back someone recently they look 
kind of fragile and like emaciated compared to the actual Tauntaun models that we have. These are Tauntauns on steroids. Yeah, exactly. These Tauntauns have been like well fed, genetically engineered with bigger horns and claws. Yeah. <laughs> they've been, they've, they've come from pure stock. They're, they're the purebred Tauntauns <laughs> that, that, you know, win the triple crown. Yeah, there you go. You know? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and use it. I think they do, actually. No, that sounds really nice. Oh, hydrate that shit. Yep. Um, do it. you have a water? Is that an unopened water? Uh, this is unopened. I'll take that. Uh, Wildstar, he's, he's almost certainly doing it to prevent an alternate target for inconspicuous. I'm just not sure that it's going to survive long enough for R2 to get over there. <laughs> um, Ooh, Dash just asked us to give him a leech and a hot take. Anybody got a hot take loaded? Yeah, Rex is not actually bad at killing armor. Just get better at your positioning. Oof. Oof. Get wrecked. That doesn't seem like that hot of a take. That actually seems, wasn't that hot of a take. No. It seems to be the opposite of what everybody says, though. So. Especially if you bring an RPS, like people have been doing recently. I just think DC is fine. Yeah. What's my hot take? Double Ion Landspeeder, new meta. Maybe that's a hot take. <laughs> I want a <laughs> refund. <laughs> uh, hot take. Um, I got nothing. You got nothing? I got nothing. Uh, I wish the reckless driver was uh, not in the game. Okay. <laughs> hot, hot take. Veteran's heavy weapon is actually worse than an uplink and a comms technician. People seem to agree with that one. They seem the to agree part. with that. That's not that hot. That's only, that's only like, I don't think that's got broad acceptance just yet, but I think it's it's starting to trickle down a little bit. I don't know, this, the potato gun has come through for me before. Yeah, it's decent. It's decent. For 26, it's decent. Yeah, it is. Crit 2. I mean, the crit often doesn't do anything, unless you're shooting at armor or something like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, Major. <laughs> Ouch. The vet take is interesting because you could probably make a pretty legitimate case that just running a five-man vet squad with a heavy is really not that great. But if you decide to make the investment to throw the six-man on there and potentially look at something like either offensive push or a tactician, the extra black die with the surge hit kind of turns it up a little bit. Yeah. It does. If that's enough dice to take a droid squad off the table it in is. one shot. Yeah. It's still expensive, but right. I think, think Reckless Driver should hit your own units. I agree. I, I think, think so Reckless too. should hit your own units. That would make it fair, you know, that you have to protect yourself from your own Reckless Driver. It just doesn't even feel, dis despite the fact that it creates lots of displacement issues and lengthens game time and, like, creates a bad play experience, it doesn't even feel thematically right for Star Wars. Are you trying to say there's no monster trucks in Star Wars? I mean, you're literally just running a bunch of dudes over with a bus. Like, I don't know. That doesn't just, it just doesn't feel Star Wars. It doesn't, would, doesn't belong in this game. If yeah, I that play feels Twisted like Metal, a, I'll turn on my PlayStation. Right. Board. That's like Twisted Metal or like Warhammer 40k orcs, you know. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to see your, I'm going to see your take on that and answer back with, uh, I should paint my second bus like Grave Digger from Monster Jam. <laughs> that would be good. That would be really good. And just good. run him with a reckless driver. <laughs> there you go. You could even probably find some actual like monster truck tires and just put them on the sides. Exactly. Most yeah. definitely. Just yeah. put them on the sides to get the decal, you know, grave digger decal. Yeah. Is this a bomb drop? Uh, I oh, guess we'll maybe. see. I don't think he's close enough to deployment zone to make that a scoring bomb drop. Yeah, he's putting the bomb on the back side, so I think this is not a bomb drop. No, he. It could be. Well, actually, I don't know. If he does drop the bomb there, yeah, I don't think he can. Yeah. I don't think he can see enough. Oh, uh, this this would potentially be a bomb. This drop. would be killer, I think, because that'd be scoring potentially, and then it would also um, hit a few things. Hit maybe. It looks like there might even be like four or five units over there. Going there. Oh snap! Cue uh, cue Battle of Britain music. Now, did he do his compulsory move first, or was that his compulsory move? I think that was his compulsory. So if that's the case, then he can't drop it. Because the compulsory move occurs after Oh, that's activation. true. If that's it. Oh. Oh, yeah.
Oh, maybe he, I think he triple moved because he started up here. He, he did. He did. So that that can't be the compulsor then. Then okay. the first one would be the compulsor. Yeah. Okay. So if he triple moves, you compulsory first. Yep. Yeah. Dash just did say Rex Star with him when Lid Star open. Well, it went two and one. It did. And there was only one. Yeah, nobody There was only it. one, and it went two and one. Ironically, it lost to, or not ironically, interestingly enough, it lost to Mandos and Wookiees on Baps and Battle Lines for the second consecutive tournament. Okay, uh, Daniel is clarifying how this bomb drop works for them. Maul did try to run over Anakin with the speeder bike. That's fair. That's a fair point. He did. Did he? He did. He uh, he almost hit him. Okay. Qui Gon had to yell at An yell at Anakin to, to get down before uh, Maul's bike hit him in the back. That does seem like something Maul would do though. Try yeah, and run over some random kid. Yeah, that's true. Just for, just just for kicks. Yeah. Maul is a bad guy. He ran. He tried to run over a six year old. Yeah. Ten. Come on. Ten. Be the okay. Worst ten year old. Done. I don't know. I don't know how old. I Jake, think he's supposed Jake to be Lewis. like 10, right? Yeah, I don't, I fan, don't remember. Phantom Menace fans can correct us. I'm sure he's supposed to be like a young, you know, young kid. But and yeah. Padme is only supposed to be like 14 or Yeah, 15. they're not that far apart in age, even though they look far apart. Yeah. Reckless Maul pilot. Yeah. yeah. Reckless Maul pilot. When is, Actually, when is Maul on a speeder coming? No, I'm good. Thanks. This is the eternal question. When are we getting mounted commanders? I would like to know, Mr. Lupo, what a beaver nugget is. Can you explain it to beaver us? Nugget? Yeah. yeah, can you tell the stream what a beaver nugget is, Judge Lupo? A beaver nugget is a delicacy from Texas. It is a puffed corn pastry in caramel. Okay, now I have to try yeah, it. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll try one. Oh, you say one. <laughs> oh, that's a mistake. You will not have one. Mm, that is delicious. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. I think you should take those over to the judge table with you. Yeah, you mm, should take them please away. Don't leave them there. Don't leave them here. <laughs> They are tasty, though. Mm. It kind of tastes like a Belgian waffle in a snack. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's got the kind of maple, that kind of maple, that kind of maple sugary flavor. Mm. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> <by this. laughs> he just poured us a cup. All right. He poured us a cup of beaver nuggets. All right. All right. <laughs> Which, I mean, if they're here, you know, fits even better into Matt Jorks' new yeah, comment. It'd be rude not to eat these, right? Yeah, it would be. Mm. If someone offers you food, it would be rude not to accept it. I mean, we did go to a place called Velvet Taco last night. That's true. That was a great restaurant. That was a great restaurant. I had a chicken tikka masala taco. I'm sad that it was not in a non-shell. That sounds really good. It was really good. It was spicy, though. I didn't ask for it mild, so they just gave it to me the way it comes. That was hot. <laughs> so what happened with this bomb? I don't even know. It doesn't look like anything is dead. No, yeah. nothing uh, I mean, It nothing looks like up. the bomb is still there. Yeah. I think it's possible they're still in the. Oh, they, actually, they can't blow it up until the end of the activation phase, so right. they gotta wait for it. A local gas station delicacy, yeah, from, it's from uh, Bucky's. <laughs> kind of makes me thirsty, though. Yeah, it's it definitely does, yeah. salty. I just want to say salty beaver nuggets on stream. <laughs> Man, these salty beaver nuggets. Ugh, sure are good. You. And I'm the crew. They sneak, they sneak up on you. <laughs> you get mounted commanders at the end of August when Yoda starts riding Chewie across battlefields. Yeah, I'm actually really, I actually really think that size matters sometimes is legit. Especially because of the save upgrade. I mean, there's, right, that's, that's huge. You get... You know, free moves out of Chewie. Or, yeah. Sorry for Yoda out of Chewie because you know Yoda doesn't have to take moves to move that distance. He can do other stuff. So yeah, I think it could be really interesting. Yeah. It's a obviously there's that huge physical cost to spend all the points to get it, but right. I, I definitely think that it's useful. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're definitely capping yourself at nine activations if you're doing Chewie and Yoda. Most definitely. You're, you probably you might even only have like three core units with heavies. Mark two um, shooting now. It's definitely gonna be fun to see. Four hits. What is he shooting at? Uh, oh, B two, I think. The TTS click. 
attack gear button isn't working it, today. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a lot easier on TTS to identify who's being attacked. We think the 47 dropped the bomb, yes. Yeah, we'll have to see how it gets resolved, but yeah. I'm waiting for this defense roll to come down. They're doing a judge line of sight call real quick. That uh, looks like he's shooting B1s with the Mark II. Oh, I see. Okay. I will say, I think those players have kept their composure very well through the number of judge calls. Number, judge yeah, there's, it's been mark. some awkwardnesses in this mm -hmm. game, for sure. But I, I think they've both managed to, to keep it respectful and pretty, pretty light in terms of the mood. It's going to be two wounds. Two wounds, yep. Two wounds on those B1s. Yeah, especially that uh, the bomb one. I mean, that's anytime you get a judge call where, like, before the game starts, you're essentially, just, you know, deciding the they, game. This is <laughs> right. gonna be a sweaty yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. Interestingly enough, even if that bomb is stuck up there, I still think he's got a chance. Yeah, he's got to get Cassian moving pretty quickly, though. I mean, he pretty much like next turn, he has to start getting Cassian up there. Yeah, this is still turn one. This is still turn one. Yep. Coming down to the closing activations of it, though, there's only a couple things left, I think, to go before the end of the turn. There's a BX droid coming up here. I think maybe going to put a shot on those veterans on the far side, or that triple wounded Mark II in the middle. Could be, could be either one of those. I'm going to go check the status of the other semi real quick. Yeah, please do. It's been like an hour, so. Yeah, let's, let's check it out. Like just a double move from the B1s there. There's a lot of dead dewbacks, but it looks like the Imperials have three boxes. Interesting. So it's two, uh, so there's two dead dewbacks, but there's a dewback on the far side that is in base to base with the box and only like an inch and a half away from R2. Oh, wild. Interesting. So that dewback could eat R2. There that can claim the box? There, there is not. There's R2, a dewback, and a T47. So the two four, T-47 basically has to kill that new back. I think so. Or R2, or he gets run over. I mean, yeah. Interesting. Rampaging lizards, man. Yep. Every time I walk over to the table that has the new backs to try to figure okay, out what's going here we on, go. I can't figure it out. Because <laughs> everything bomb. is all over the place. It's just totally chaos, yeah. Here comes the bomb rolls. This is going to be a lot of three paint. A lot of three paint, yeah. So it's great, right? It does, but luckily for Bobby Joe, Armor 1 does come into play here. Alright, it's going to use 2. Yep. And it is suppressive, he says. And it doesn't hit the T-47 because it's a ring. And it one. doesn't yeah, even right. touch the T-47. Yeah, this is the real secret sauce of the T-47 bomb drop. Yeah. And this is why Bombing Run is such an objective where people are like, if you don't have speeders, it's just literally the worst thing you could possibly have. B1 unit makes us one save. Another declaration on Maul. Ooh, he misses on Maul. One hit only. Okay, blocked on Maul. That's Almost big. got a free Geo trigger there, actually. Yeah, actually. <laughs> if my opponent does the first wound to Maul for me, I'm usually you're, pretty happy about it. Yeah, you're like, oh, thank you. Because then you don't have to play at last to do it. Yeah. It's one of those weird things about Maul. It's like, if you want to kill him, you need to have like a, the ability to direct a lot of damage his way quickly right. yeah. before he gets out of control with Geo. Yeah. That's what makes Minefield pretty interesting sometimes, because you can kind of turn it on yourself. Yeah, the danger there is you... you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You take more than one. Right, you take more than one, you get like a double detonate and then yeah. things go really south for you. And now yeah. I've taken four points. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I activated Juyo there. Okay, yeah. so it would appear the bombs did like, what, five wounds or six wounds there to the nearby droid ball? That's about right. 
They only hit a couple of the units, but more importantly, Bruce did score a victory point. Yeah. So that's the uh, beginning of the Rebels' effort here at Bombing Run at the Lone Star Open 2021 Final Four. This might just be my ineptitude, but it's the mixer thing. Like, should I be doing something? What's up? No, never mind. I'm just uh, disregard. There are a few units I think if you want early if you can. Mall definitely, yeah. And Mall's really, I mean, Mall is great. I think you could make the argument that he's the best force user right now. But he's also, without question, the most fragile one. Um, in practice, he's almost always on five wounds. He only has one card that helps his defense at all uh, with that last. And it's a one pip, so it's not like, you know, it's not like Luke's card setup where he's got three cards that give him dodges and they're all nice reactive cards. Um, so, yeah, he, he is very vulnerable to getting punched to death by lots of things, <laughs> up to and including Wookiees. Um, but even, like, Stormtroopers, you know, clones, Rebel Troopers, uh, I've had them all punched, punched to death by a generic Rebel officer before. Um, so, yeah, he's super flexible and very fast and great with saber throw, but uh, definitely can drop very quickly. Rest in peace, Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I miss that unit. Me too. I miss Han Solo and Legion. I really do. He's one of one of several Rebel units that were not even taken today. Han, Leia, and the Landspeeder all were not at the tournament at all. In and in, in any in form, any list at all. Despite like half the field being Rebels. Yeah, despite half the field being Rebels, exactly. Has anyone killed a Force user with clumsy kick? I'm sure it's happened. Yeah, I'm sure it's happened. We definitely killed force users with uh, R2 Zap, yep. the Electro Prod or whatever it's called. All right, round two command cards coming up. Ambush and covering fire. Yep. So, what do you think this covering fire is going to do? It's just to order the order the core and get him out of the pool, maybe. Probably, because that T-47 is out of order range. Although he might have... No, I don't think he has uplinks. Um, it's interesting to see what this ambush is for. Maybe he's looking to finish off some of those weak core activations. Meanwhile, an ambush is coming from Bobby Joe. I'm wondering what this is targeted at. Maybe a Mark II... He felt, for some reason, he felt the need to win priority here. Well, he's got at least three activations between the one wound Mark II, the one man uh, veteran unit, and then the other two man veteran unit um, that he could potentially delete this turn. Yeah, before they get away. Yep. Yeah, what he doesn't want is he doesn't want them running. Right, and hiding. Joe with his first activation of the turn. He's moving one of his bomb carriers forward here. Oh, that's true. He can set up fire supports with his, uh, his Mark II. Oh, Bobby Joe is intercepting R2-D2 with one of his bomb carrying B1s. Doesn't R2 have a suppression? R2 though? has a suppression though, so inconspicuous with fire. Oh, I see I missed some discussion about what units were brought. Did you get to see the whole list by any chance? Uh, um, Stuff that didn't show up? No. The Imperial list is not surprising. It's Krennic, Death Troopers, and uh, one other. We had a GAV. No ATSTs. Yeah, no ATSTs, but one GAV tank. No Dooku or Grievous. Yeah, yeah. what? That means that every droid list had a T-Series in it. Yes. Or yeah. a field commander. Yes. Which is a T-Series field commander. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that sort of tells you where people's heads are at with list building right now. I mean, part of it is a response to an armor meta. Like, as a droid player, that's why it's specifically why I brought them all. Um, yeah. 
Dooku and Grievous are both not as good as Maul at dealing with armor. Um, yeah. That's the primary reason, at least for me. AP shell AATs with the field commander are also really, really good at killing armor. Yep. I'm also shocked we only saw one double AAT. Same here, yeah. but then even then, that didn't get to the top eight either. No, it actually only went one and two. Yeah, which was surprising to me. I would have thought it would have done a little bit better. Sadly for me, it lost to Rex Star during one, or game one. Yeah, that makes sense. It hit. Got a B2 shot. Oh, this is a range 2 B2 shot. Nope, not thanks for watching. I mean, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please but stick around. Please do stick around. <laughs> Uh, looks like he shot. I think it was only two wounds. Looks like he shot an MK2 instead of one of the wounded units. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Cassian looks like he's still in the building too. Yeah. Yeah, Cassian is still stuck up on that building with that bomb. Yeah, one speeder, one wookie truck is definitely like a rounder, kind of. It's rounder than two 347s or two buses. You get to you get to have your cake and eat it too a little bit with that combo in terms it's, of rebel heavies. It's a little bit less skew. Yeah, it's less yeah. of a skew. Yeah, I dig it, personally. Right, Mark II shooting B2s now. Looks like three. Three. Two hits and two crits. So the crits are what passes through with the armor and the cover. Yep, and two wounds. Two wounds. I feel like there's this, uh, a little bit of a misnomer with B2s sometimes. I, I, I've noticed that people are kind of afraid to shoot them, like they think it's a waste of time. But frankly, yes, they have armor one, which does help. But at the end of the day, they have white safe without a surge. Right. Um, you have to shoot them. Right. <laughs> yeah. People, like, people see the armor one and they get scared off. Right. It's just... All it does is replace the cover that they would have from suppression. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm so doing, I do what Bruce does, does, which is I'm shooting things that I know can pass crits. Right. right. And that's another reason why I like the veterans, too, is that they actually have that extra play against B2s because they have that range 3 shot with critical yeah. 2. I agree, Wildstar. Armor 1 is not easy to push through when they have heavy cover, a dodge, and armor one from yes roger roger that, and b2s that's true <laughs> that does happen occasionally that happens a lot where they cancel four hits before anything happens so yeah that hurts yeah double truck would be painful to drive with this board i agree yeah he's taking some wounds on these b2 units yeah he's taking a lot oh it looks like that was a rally roll oh that was rallying yeah. okay never mind that's a good time to go over three there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you want to, as a droid player, you want to get your blanks out of the way on your rallies and your, uh, <laughs> spike, your, your, spike paint, on your paint on the defense. Yeah. yeah, see if you can spike up on your defense roll. Wouldn't that be interesting if you could sort of, like, allocate your dice luck to be as efficient as possible? <laughs> like, just take all your rolls from a given game and sort of reallocate them as, as you so desire? That would be great. <laughs> oh, that's a B2 rocket with all paint. He spends the surge for the fourth. Ah, oh, I didn't even see the white dot hitting. Yeah, yeah, four hits. I wonder what he's shooting there. I think a Mark II. Yeah, uh, it looks like it was the... Oh, it was the veteran. Line. Okay, for the points. Yeah, the one veteran. Yeah, because that's like 73 points. Yep. And I don't think that unit had actually activated. Right, which is important. Right, that's also important. It was an, uh, shooting at an unactivated unit, which and, is a smart call. Yep. And he's still got a veteran, or, I'm sorry, a Mark II in that area with just one move left. Right. It's, um, I think, I think it was you guys that talked about it. That's the tempo, the Charlie tempo. Yep. Game. Yeah, if you can get those unactivated units, even if it's like a weak unit that you feel like you're kind of wasting a strong dice pool on, it's still worth it, usually for me. I think in the future, if like a future setup, we could have like one of these angle cameras facing the facing one side of the board, and then have another angle camera, the same setup, opposite way facing the other side of the board, so you can go back and forth yeah, between the two. Weird. So as as the players activate, you could go back and forth between them. Yeah, you know, that would be, be cool. kind of interesting. Okay, checking for line of sight. 
uh, we will most definitely recenter the cameras before the final. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have a whole checkout. We're going to actually change the table. Are we? Yep. We'll change the table, recenter the cameras. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna be changing to Nabu actually for the final. Okay. Maybe so it's we a can table. get enough guys to just pick up the table. And it's carry a them. it's a table that we're making sure it's a table none of the top eight have played before. Okay. To make it extra fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Krugar, I think the shield tokens are how he tracks whether the HA is exhausted or not. That is correct. Everybody does it differently. I have my uh, I actually have my card trays colored to correspond with the color that's on the B2s. Oh, that's smart. And then I just flip the card on there. But yeah, I like that move. Some people actually put the card physically on the table. Um, the shield token's a good way because you can see it you know, right there in front of you. Um, I just, uh, there's so many tokens on the table in the first place. Uh, I try and reduce the number of tokens that I can my, get on the table. Uh, for my phase twos for offensive push, my, my base rings are red, purple, and green. Uh -huh. And then I have, I just have enough promo cards from the little miracle things that they used to hand out that are red, purple, and green, so oh, I just nice. put them on the little card sleeve. Yeah. When it's face up, it's active. When it's down, it's not. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so this is... What attack was this? Uh, yeah. it's... Oh, he's fire supporting. He's fire supporting, supporting yeah. too, yeah. Ooh, big blank. Uh, there's a couple actually, no, there's a couple blocks there. there yeah. Nine. So two out of five is actually pretty decent. Is that a bomb carrying squad? Uh, no. I'm gonna go move those cards out of that dice tray. Yeah, can you? That would help us a lot to read it. David, what has been your favorite moment of the tournament so far? Honestly, my favorite moment of the tournament was yesterday when Wookiees uh, chopped their way through a unit of rebel troopers and didn't even slow down on their way to engaging Sabine. Okay, okay. that was one That's of my favorite one. moments. And then the uh, casual bitch slap as they yeah, exactly, just casually s smoking them. And then my other favorite moment also involved Wookies, and that was Wookies versus Maul. Okay, killing Maul. I think my favorite moment was the exclamation that you, myself, Mike, and Kyle all had when Wookie went three for six. Yeah, that everybody was. Everybody yelled. And we all yelled. did it the same pitch and <laughs> yeah. tone. We were like, oh, <laughs> you know, we all kind of had that that realization that, like, holy crap, he rolled 50% on Wookiees, <laughs> which is really hard to do. <laughs> Let's turn this off for a bit so they can see the full table. Pickle Monk, that's an interesting idea about putting a D6 down and what turn you used it. That might also be a good way to just track your own progress and keep some personal data about when you use upgrades. Yeah, that's true. You could track each one, like putting a one face or a two face. Right. You could have a whole system. Another Mark II shooting here, I think. Not a great, not a great For nothing. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Sometimes they blank. It's it's painful. You're like, dude, I have black dice and I have critical too. I should get more than just one. We gotta check out that other semi real quick. Okay. Ghost will be right back with the uh, semifinal report from the other table. Uh, Mike Jem versus David Hoffman. Running alongside this game, which is Bruce Merker versus Bobby Joe Thomas. BX Sniper taking a shot here. This is a BX sniper now shooting a Mark II, I believe, with a single wound. And so one after cover, and he blocks it because there's no lethal. So the Mark II survived. Yeah, I find if there's sort of like one weakness of the Mall B2 list, besides most of the list being range 3 and under, and under, it's that it's pretty difficult to consistently get an order to that sniper. And you usually just roll in two red with no gears. So what do you think about mechanized incursion spawning additional orders every time a vehicle coordinates? It seems fine. I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I think most of the time, the like in the in the situations where you're running it, you have so many orders anyway that you know it's like you go from mostly entire full face ups to mostly like entirely full face ups. I, I hate that it shuts off all of the AI. 
you know, just for free, essentially. Like, you play the one pip, then you direct, and every time you... It's for staff specifically. Right. Because every time a staff gets an order, issue an order to one to, but one to two. Yeah. So all the snipe... Like you say, it goes full face up. And yep. I feel like there should be some limitation to it, but there's no limitation. Yeah. On a one pip, even. Yeah, I think in general, it just in practice, it doesn't make much of a difference with the actual quantity of orders that are out there. Well, I think it does, because yeah. if, you, if you're passing orders to snipers, they get to aim shoot. They actually they have an hour. Yeah, the VX snipers are where it makes a difference, I guess. Okay, how many minutes are left? An hour. An hour? Okay. What ha what's happening in the other game? The other game is freaking wild. So, we have Vader's Might ripping a Wookiee off of the middle box right now that has the middle box. Okay. We have a Dewback that is chasing R2 down the far side while the T-47 tries to kill it before it gets to R2 with an unclaimed box over there. <laughs> On the other side of the table, there are three boxes. Two are claimed by the Imperials, and one is now unclaimed. So we have two unclaimed boxes, two in possession of the Imperials, one in possession of a Wookiee that just got Vader's Might and is about to get smacked, and then R2 being chased down by a rampaging dewback in a T-47. That seems kind of bad for the uh, Rebel player. It doesn't seem great right now. Yeah, the Rebels are... The Rebels it's, are getting whipped, if that's the case. <laughs> it's interesting. It is. No, I thought it was the first vehicle too, Pickle Monk, but apparently it's every time a vehicle coordinates, so you can give BX's perfect order control for aim shooting on that turn, all three of them. So I just feel like that's a bridge too that's a bridge too far for me. Hey, at this rate he might. There's a possibility. I think that list is better than people give it credit for, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I I think people don't have experience against it either. Yeah. It's a double whammy there. Yeah. Yeah, Blood also getting a hit a lot by these airspeeders. And another, this airspeeder did go... Say, did I miss a T-47 shot? Yeah, I think I missed a T-47 shot. Which yeah, is not good. airspeeders are good against uh, white saves. Yeah, against white saving ball B-2s. Yep. And these airspeeders haven't uh, taken much heat either. I think both are on. Yeah, he's mostly oh, been shooting. The, the oh, it just killed the T6. Killed the tactoid. Wow. Thank Ooh. you, Captain, uh, Captain Zodiac. Thank you, Zodiac, for following that. Man, that's pretty devastating, actually, because he's going to have trouble getting orders to his B1 uh, units on the Malterns. This is true. And I think both the Mal 1 are still in the stack. Yeah. It's always a little bit of a struggle to like successfully hide the T-Series against the double T-47 list because they're so fast and they can kind of go wherever they want. And he's only got four wounds. So. Right. Um, and they're unsurging white teams. Right. Right, he doesn't surge, I think. Does not surge. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not weird at all for a T-47 to just fully one-shot a T-Series, no matter where he's hiding. Yeah, four wounds on white saves is not a lot of, not a lot of wounds. No. I think he looks like we're going to move his B-2 out here to try to wipe that rebel. Yeah, it's moving. this is on the edge of the camera, unfortunately. Uh, There's a couple of blue ring bases in the top right hand corner. Yeah, that's where the action's happening right now. These B2s are moving out and going to take a shot at those veterans. Who are in the open, I think. Unless I'm not seeing a crate. No, they are in the open. They are in the open, okay. Yeah, I ran a triple do Vader list with a DTF-16 Death Trooper for a little bit of time. Yeah. Instead of the IRG, because you can just compel the do-backs. Yep. Do you like it? I do, um, but it doesn't work in my local meta, so I haven't really run it. <laughs> it doesn't work because why doesn't it work in your local meta? Because of Jedi or what? It doesn't really work because there's a lot of. I have a very clone heavy meta. I see. And I just couldn't keep the dudes alive long enough. To Looks make like it work six hits on this uh, bat squad. Yeah. Woof. Three saves. Three saves They're still though. alive. They're still alive. Wow. Solid save there for those veterans. That's important because. Bobby Joe really needs to get sort of like maximum efficiency out of his shots here. Um, having to spend another attack to finish off that bat unit is not great. Especially as he continues to lose models himself. Right. That single single unit leader hanging around adds up quickly. Yep. Yeah, he's got one MK2 on one wound, one vet on one wound, and another vet unit on two wounds. Yep. But they're still there. But they're still there, <laughs> exactly. 
Gabe Bruce pulling an operative. I think that's going to be K. He's measuring off K2. At this point for Bruce, knowing that there's only about 55 minutes left, does Cassian even go for it? Or does he just take sniper shots? I think he just takes sniper shots, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're only on round two. Yeah. This could be like a four-round game. Yeah. Um, Easily. There's no chance that Cassian's getting that entire distance in that time. Not safely, at least. No. Another thing, too, is like if you have, a, you know, Bobby Joe's feeling pressure to kill these core units off, because every core unit that's alive could engage his own units and right. prevent the bomb drop. Yep. K2 rolls have been really bad. <laughs> that's like why... A, there's like an 0 for 9 in the last game he oh, was on. Yeah. yeah, that's why I like the double bus with K and Cassian, because they start with four aims off the top usually. Yeah, and then you're just doing like a little mini lying in wait every turn. Exactly, the, every time you go with... Awesome. Yep, and if Cassian uh, moves, tactical one, fifth aim, yep. spend one for long shot, convert everything to a crit, every time Cassian shoots, seems real good. Like just GG for the, uh, the two Vader Dudes. Did he give so up? Vader Dudes makes the final. Wow, Vader Dude makes the final. Anyway, so Roach have redeemed ad times. So we're going to run a quick ad break, so we'll be back in a minute or two. If you're a subscriber, though, thank you for staying with us. Okay, Bobby Joe to act. Yeah, actually, that is a valid point. Maybe, maybe Cassian goes south. We could plan to go south because Bobby Joe has moved a lot of his forces to the right. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely. I mean, he's only got the one v two over there. Um, and it's only. It's just a question miles. of distance and time, really. Right. Yeah. If you were on the front edge of that building, it might be a little bit of a different story. What what a final it would be if it was double T forty seven versus Vader Deuce. <laughs> that's, what that's what a thing. meme final. That would be a very meme <laughs> final. Yeah, it's been kind of a meme tournament. Some kind of it's been a little bit of a meme tournament. Yeah, with the uh, lack of Rex. Yeah. <laughs> lack of Rex, fourteen buses. <laughs> and really, other than Mal B two, is not very many like quote unquote meta uh, droid lists either. No, um, it's really not. You know, there was, what, maybe like one double AAT. Um, no 13 activation stats. There's only two triple stat lists in the here at all. Yeah. Uh, yes, it would be one activation for a move claimer, and then three moves down, I think he would get it. Because he just has to be within reach one, right? Oh, man. I'm surprised that, that Mike Jones. Yeah, it's uh, just got to be range one. I'm surprised that Mike Jam got taken down by Vader Dews. I'm amazed. I mean, it, it's one of, like, I actually think, you know, so he's got the T-47 in that list, which helps a little bit. Yeah. But other than that, it's a double Wookiee list with a bus, which means that it wants to get in your face, which is what the Dews want. Right, and the Dews. And Vader. And, Vader. and, yeah, and if, you, if you get priority, the Dews are just going to eat you. Yeah. Like, the way to deal with Vader Dews is with overwhelming ranged firepower. Which is um, why I struggled in my corner. Yeah, right. Yeah. Turns out Anakin Fire Support is also very good at killing a Dubek. Yep. Yeah, I've, uh, I've one hit killed Dubeks before with Anakin Fire Support. It's, it's dirty. What is this in the blue team? Is that the one that's all the way over there, I guess? What's up? Is the Naboo table the one that's all the way over there? Yeah, the it's tower. the one over there with the towers, yeah, and the windows. It's going to be some height, height 2 and height 3 things. I think we have a top-down camera. Yeah, good thing we have top. <laughs> yeah, that's why. I, that's one of the reasons I chose it, too, is that it looks good on the on the angle. On the angle cam, and uh, looks good on the top-down as well. Uh, Mike Montalongo. Yeah, unfortunately, more fortunately, Rex was not barred. Yes, so when I say voted off the island, what I mean is Rex was stigmatized to the point where people didn't want to bring him to a tournament. 
Um, Segmentize is like, like OP, you know. People just wanted more fun. Yeah. Just gotta embrace being the villain, man. Yeah, so as you gotta be a heel. This Not is like, gonna lie, I honestly thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I recently painted Mike's clone army for him, basically. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> I strong, like I strongly thought about being like, hey, uh, can I just borrow your Rockstar for this event? And I'll but, just bring it and kill yeah. kill everyone with it. <laughs> I mean, Rockstar is. I I made this comment. I think it was two Invader seasons ago. So this was with standby sharing, granted. Yeah. But um, I had not played it yet, and I did a practice match with Mike because he was going to be facing a Rockstar mirror, um, and I played Rockstar for the first time, and I was like, man, it's like I've been riding a moped this this whole time and somebody just gave me a Lamborghini. Yep. You know? <laughs> yep, it does everything. Yeah, just all the things. Okay, many blanks were rolled there in response to a, uh, a E5C shot. Uh, Mark II has just been taken off the board. So, Bobby Joe chipping away at the Rebels here with I, his E5C shots. I think it's going to kind of come down to how many bombs he can get in there in time. Especially if we only got 50 minutes left. Um, yeah. And that left hand T47 is most likely going to support this turn. Yeah. And yep. that, that bomb could actually kill another B2 squad. It could very Yeah, much, I yeah. think that bomb could kill another B2. Actually, I think he would be able to compulsory shoot you and still drop the bomb. Yeah. Okay, so, like, the T47 actually is an interesting position because it could, like, cut across the the back here right. and, like, kill off dark droids. It could pressure Maul. Right. It could pressure these B1s, which would be in the open lane. I think the right move here is to take the shot at these B2s, move again, and drop them off. Yeah, like compulsory shoot move. Right. Because yeah. you're almost guaranteeing that there's two or ten. Yeah, you have, you can do it basically everything that way. It's six yeah. right, three blasts here, right? Yeah. <laughs> to do three wounds. Here comes the T47, a little bit of terrain bumping going on. Sounds like a Legion event. Yeah, that happens. It's, it's hard not to bump the terrain when you're playing. Especially with the neoprene mats. It just yeah. slides. They do. Yeah. Super easy. Uh, I think the bomb by the straps are just forgotten, right? Right inside. I think that's supposed to be the B1s. Yeah, the B1s were carrying the bomb. And that might be dead B2s. Yep, yeah. down they go. Seven's doing work. Yeah, they are. They've been doing work all tournament. Yep. Definitely proved that this to the T forty seven is a viable vehicle. But again, like as this as this game and and um, Bruce's last game showed, your ability to actually hold space on the ground is pretty limited. You've got to be playing a very flighty game, a very uh, cagey game, and making sure the forty sevens engage at angles where they can actually. Um, do damage. It's a very mobile, high damage army. It is not kind of like the clone, you know, hold in place style. And so Rebels yeah. not that good at holding in place compared to other factions. There are some Rebel builds that can do it, like veterans, or not veterans, um, captain troopers with Nimble certainly can hold in place. Um, but this, we haven't seen the Rebels favor that style of list at this tournament today. I don't think anybody brought captains with a situational or anything like that. No, I don't think so either. I know someone did bring four captains at one point. I mean, it's it's interesting. I think you have sort of a situation like with the Tauntaun meta where Tauntauns were best against other Rebelists that didn't have Tauntauns. Yeah. Um, I think if you're running a list like that DLT Vigilance Captain list, you're going to just get uh, like run over almost literally by the bus Wookiee lists. You're going to get Wookiee'd. <laughs> yeah. So the internal balance of the faction was tipped back into the melee land just before yeah. that that list really took off. Looks like maybe that bomb was dropped because he's moving a, a B1 unit over to it. And yeah, he like traded. I think he traded concert. that bomb. Yeah, to a different unit. Yeah, Bruce's doing a good job here of getting his T-47s around on good, um, like some nice flanking angles. Yeah, I love these the way these 47s are flying. 
and he's he's been a good job to avoiding. You know, I think we commented on his aggressive uh, core unit moves at this, the start of the game, um, but that also means that uh, Bobby Joe has been shooting the core units instead of shooting the T-47s with those impact pulls. Right, it's baited the rockets away from the vehicles. Right. So now it's like you know, turn three and. Both and both of those forty sevens are fully healthy. Yes. Which now that uh, Bobby Joe's down to B two, he's already had got a reduced ability to deal with that armor. Cassian looking at some snipe targets here. Uh, Captain Teddy X saying he thinks that that unit panicked the black commander. Oh, that's how he dropped it. Uh, yeah. Should explain why he moved down. Yep. So it does look like Cassian is going to decide to just shoot at mm -hmm. this point. Yep. But Bobby Joe doesn't look super close to being able to drop any bombs. No, so he doesn't. He must be able to drop any. The closest unit is this B1 in the center center right of the screen. I mean, bombing run is such an uphill battle when you have a trooper face trooper based uh, list. Yeah. To begin with. The issue just for Bobby Joe though is that one of those bombs is in Maul's possession. And I don't think Maul is gone this turn. He has not. So he, he will still potentially get two actions to move towards that deployment zone. This is only turn two. It is turn two. Cassian doing a wound there. Yeah, it's kind of a struggle with because you know trooper units. People are like, well, you can just double move with trooper units and you can still score bombs in time. But trooper units need to be doing things other than just moving towards your opponent's army. <laughs> right, they need to be actually like contributing dice. Right, um, and that's why speeders are so good at it is because they can do both things. Right, they can move and shoot. Um, or double move and shoot even, you know. In those times with the speeder, either they have some sort of damage mitigation via dodges or armor, so that if you do need to move them into an area where they're a little exposed, they've got a build-in mitigation that you didn't have to do anything to get. Right, exactly. So, I just looked over at the table, there's a veteran unit hiding behind the uh, mechanic's house on the upper right corner of the screen. There's like two minis back there that are just chilling. The the top corner? Yeah, they just, they hit, they chilled out up there. At least I think, that, care I think that's what I'm seeing. They're probably going to be there forever. I would think so. <laughs> I yeah. feel like Mandos don't quite have the economy that T-47s have, though. There's that extra move. Go yeah. ahead. No, I agree, they don't. Yeah. Because you want to be shooting with your Mandos. So you're taking maybe like a single speed three move and then shooting. Um, like, clearly they're better at it than a normal trooper unit, but... Right. So there's that double move forward with Maul that we just mentioned. So he is going to beeline there. He's going for it. He's going to go for the bomb drop at some point here. He has to. Yeah, there's no other way. Okay, R2-D2 getting pulled. Or K2? No, it's R2. Now, a potential Dark Horse play here, if he, if there's time, is, you know, next turn Maul could drop that bomb. And then the turn after that, conceivably, he can get close enough to Cassian, potentially kill Cassian, take that bomb, drop it, and then score Cassian's bomb. Yeah, there is a, a that chance. Would be, that would be hot. That would be hot. I mean, there's definitely enough turns to do that. It's unclear if there's enough time to do that. Right. The other factor here is secret mission, which... This is true. Yep. Bruce is now approaching the halfway point to get that and secret I think mission. We know he does have last off his hand. <laughs> Skin LK makes a good point as well. Losing the T series and the start of the order chain via direct does mean that some of the B ones are going to struggle to slow down or struggle to move the bomb when they have to shoot something. Yeah, he's not going to be able to play like Maul, you know, at last or uh, duel the fates on turns where he needs to double move in the B ones. Right, and having already played um, air support and should I get my BF for the generics because it's only turn two? Yeah. Hey JD, yeah, it is top four. Welcome, man. Oh, I can pull it up. 
we think the second bomb has been dropped pretty hard. There's no reason that it wouldn't have been. But we don't know for sure until this turn ends. Yeah, we think it's been dropped. Uh, it's probably going to be scored if it has a VP at the end of the round here. Though, I guess there is the possibility that he wants to hold. Oh, he may be... Oh, you yeah. know, he might save it for damage. Right, there's a possibility he just takes it into the middle. Yeah. Drops it, not, not the middle, but takes it towards the backside of his droid forces and drops it. Then. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't actually drop he didn't it. Actually drop okay, round four, I believe, at Probably last his offense. Yeah. versus push. I hope he knows that the bomb can be picked up. I'm sure he knows that. Yeah, I'm sure so. he knows that. Okay, and long range comlink coming into play. It's a good upgrade card. For T-47 specifically, yes. Mm -hmm. So JD Nielsen, or JDG Nielsen, we are actually just starting round three. Um, we had a little bit of a judge delay at the startup with some some rules clarifications. And to recap, I guess, the T-47 on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen was able to drop the bomb turn one in the middle of the droid army, um, score the victory point, and deal a decent bit of damage. And then that T-47 and the one on the left have been able to pincer the droids from the sides and really just take, I mean, we're talking like six to eight models off the table a turn between the two of them. There is a bomb in the bottom left T-47 as well, but it appears that that was not dropped last turn. We postulate that he's going to move that towards the back side of the droids again in a little bit of an offensive move. Um, the third bomb for the Rebel player is actually Cassian that is stuck on top of the building just to the left of the Lone Star open. Um, text at the top. And then for the droids, you can see two bombs carried by B1s in the middle at about 3 o'clock around that crate. And then the third bomb is actually on Darth Maul just to the north of them. R2 is sneaking across the top. He's currently under Bobby Joe's name tag. Okay, Bobby Joe pulling from the bag, getting a core token. Doing some measuring towards R2 veterans, and of course he has to worry about K2 engaging. And here's that AI attack that's going to come up. The AI attack has to go. Bobby Joe has unfortunately lost the T-Series, so he has lost direct. Yep, AI attack. Looks like two pieces of paint. Are there surges? I don't know. Looks like there's one in the surge. And it's going to get blocked, I believe. Yep. The T-Series yeah, commander was... Oh, I'm sorry, David, go ahead. No, I was going to say the T-Series is dead, Nostris. So there is no uh, T-Series anymore. It was down in the bottom right-hand corner, but that right T-47... That right T-47 has smoked it. I'm trying to talk quietly, David. Getting a posture check because I'm hunched over the microphone. Yeah, well, we're... Hunching, we, hunching over the microphone. We have to be hunched because of the... Uh, the sound spillover, unfortunately. That's true, our postures are all not great right now because of the, the sound. Yeah, T-Series is very fragile. And it's in, it's literally impossible to hide from Jarrah's beers. Yeah. Jarrah's beers just want to go out and get something, they just do it. Yep, they just do it. Yep. Bruce Merker, I don't actually believe, is on the Discord. Uh, Bobby Joe Thomas is Blood Ocean. Someone posted that uh, it was like Spider-Man meme. Uh, oh, we're using our, our made-up names. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. It's funny just kind of interacting with everyone this weekend. It's like, oh, what's your Discord handle? Yeah, what's your Discord handle? Because like we know <laughs> people more from their Discord handles than from like their actual names. Yep. I'm never sure how to introduce myself. Yeah, I My just, name's Mike. There's a thousand of us. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd, Bruce is right, T47 turning in. Go ahead. I just put my made-up name on the back of my shirt, so that, you know. That's a smart call. <laughs> I had a name tag. It, it disappeared. T47 shooting. I wonder what it's shooting. Is it shooting Maul, or it might be shooting a dark droid? could shoot dark droids. Looks like red dice. Yeah, that's small. That's small. Uh, let's get, let's get rolled. 
Looks like two moons probably, unless he has a search token. Yeah, I think that's a search in the bottom right. Yeah. Which I don't think he does because there's no AT anymore. Oh, is that a that can't be a surge on? Can that is that a surge on Maul or a surge on the B2s? I believe it's a surge on the B2s. Yeah, Maul would just have an aim from Jedi Hunter. Right. I don't think he has or any from cards Atlas, to get him I guess. And his two moons on Maul. Yep, that's good. For the rebels, bad for the Imperial, bad for the CIS, obviously. But. So it puts Maul at four remaining, right? Yep. It's actually an interesting decision to shoot Maul. I think killing Maul is a smart call. Yeah, Maul's, I mean, I think at this point, Bobby Joe needs sort of some Maul magic, if you will. This um, is true. And, uh, yeah, there's, I think that's the right call. To just divert away and trade a bomb for R2. Yeah. Well, he's not. It depends on how much time. He's not necessarily trading a bomb. Oh, that's but he, true. But he does need to kill R2 if he's got any hope of uh, pulling this out. Yeah. So he rallies, I think, with Maul here. Yep. Keeping that single suppression is probably a good thing. Well, the T47s have the hot shot. Yeah. May not matter. I'm just turning this off so we can actually see behind those things. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Like a move. So a move with jump and then another move. And he does have Geo now. He has Geo Master, yeah. Since he's wounded. Saber throwing R2 there. Yeah, I don't know. I, this is another. Or maybe another he's going to force push them into melee with them. Ah, maybe. Yeah. If you want, a, if you want another. Never mind. You have water. I'm giving away water. That's going to be four. Yeah, that's a saber throw on R2. Oh. R2's dead. R2 down. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> So R2 just getting saber thrown off the board just reminds me of those uh, in Fallen Order when you cut an astromech with your lightsaber, they just cut in half and yep. they go flying. <laughs> yep. They fly, like the physics engine makes them fly like they're made out of like paper. <laughs> Techno. trying to do something here. He doesn't do anything. Doesn't even hit. Yeah, his purpose over there is sort of uh, moot now that R2's dead. Right. Yeah. Direction's unclear. Protect R2? Direction's unclear. <laughs> So it was like, it, the other game has, has concluded and Invader Deuce took it down. So one of your finalists today will be David Hoffman. something. I think at the airspeeder. <laughs> okay, airspeeder takes a wound from the Haw rocket. Vader Dues, was that a good counter to the, all the revs or what happened there? Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Half the field was rebels. 
It's a good counter meta pick. And close range rebels. Close range less. rebels, yeah, yeah, aggressive rebels. Yep. So Deuce came in, started munching. Yep. And uh, tired of being kept in captivity. That's right. <laughs> they were underfed previously. <laughs> yep. Jurassic Park Allen. That's gonna be two hits from it's probably a mark two there. Three from the mark two. Looks like he shot them all again. Yep. Oh no, he uh, killed BXs, I think. Oh, BXs, yeah. Yeah, he I killed they were there. He killed a BX. I did too. With a mark two. <laughs> yeah. Like he's rolling red dice, must be mall. Yeah, there's and a then BX. I was like, wait a minute, he put that token in the middle there? Not yeah. yeah. I feel like the Rebels are ahead right now. I think so. Am I? Even if R2 is dead, I feel like they're ahead. They're yeah, because he's going to get two bombs. Yeah. Um, I guess it's going to be a question of whether uh, I think he's going to potentially be up on points too. So it's yeah. a question of whether Bobby Joe can get two bombs off or not. That unit panicking him with the bomb really set him back. That definitely did because that just wasted a bunch of time. And all this AI is going to be kind of a problem too. Yeah. Let's see. And I actually, with a T series dead. I actually don't think that bomb is claimed right now. It is not. Right, because it was a double move to get the base contact last time. So he's going to have the AI and then claim the bomb. Right, and that AI is going to shoot an airspeeder. Yeah. No, he does have, it looks like, I mean, he's got the mall bomb, and then he's got uh, one other bomb that's within, like, a reasonable range. Right. But they're also kind of running out of time. I do not know what time is left. So it's a New Hope and Empire Strikes Back final, sort of. Yeah. It's definitely a, a confirmation that the Rebels and the Empire are not as bad as people thought. But at the same time, again, we're missing basically half of the Clone Wars with a lot of Rex not showing up. Another Ha rocket. Looks like he split fire. There are 29 minutes left, by the way. Okay. Before overtime. Right. This is this is turn three. Yep. Oh okay. wait, was that a full BX shooting a T forty seven for nothing? I think that's what happened. Uh, I think the BX got killed. Oh, I'm not sure. No, I think that was a B a B two droid split fire. Looks like a Mark II move up. Another one. These Mark IIs have lived for quite a while. Yeah, he's he's been kind of unable to finish off that one with one wound on it. It's starting to cause some problems. Uh, Cassian is still on top of the building, Tori. Yeah, he's still on top of the building carrying a bomb, but he's kind of just sitting on it, trying to uh, play over play the Overwatch idea. But I don't know what he can even see right now. Um, I wonder if he's setting up for like a Cassian sniper fire sport next turn. If he plays like assault or something like that, or push. Could be. Where's one of the T-47s? One of them and just leaves him there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's just setting up a shot for next turn. Yeah. Okay, B1's now moving up. Going out from under that T-47. Players asking where the bombs are. Fair, fair enough question. Very important question. And Bruce pulls a core. Yeah, I think that's the only one that he has. Punch 
punch him. Yep, punch. Four, two? Looks like just one. And Maul takes a wound. Ow. Yeah, what did I say about Maul being punched to death yeah, by Yeah, Maul getting punched units. to death by troopers, yeah. yeah it's terrifying. He's lo he, it's like Commander Luke in a lot of ways. Yeah. Except Commander Luke's got three cards that give dodge tokens. Right, Commander Luke has, has Luke cards. Yeah. Comments in the chat about Cassian not having his token put in his bag this round. I don't think the round that we were talking about ever ended, right? No, I don't think so either. I think it's just been a super long round. Okay, that's what I thought. I think he went at the beginning of the turn with Cassian. Right, I thought he sniped off like a B2 model. Yeah, something like that. I might be missing something. Yeah, it's legal as long as the draw is random. If people are asking about token stacking. Uh, okay. There's nothing that says you can't like stack your tokens to make sure you have the right number of... Uh, as, long uh, as, you, as long as you shuffle them before you draw. Right, as long as the draw is actually random. Yep. Oh, someone redeemed ad time. Yep, someone redeemed ad time, so uh, someone, someone we're going to run an ad and we'll be back. <laughs> If you're a subscriber, thank you for staying with us. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage so far of the yeah. first five rounds of the Lone Star Open 2021. Yep. Presented by Frontline Gaming. Definitely feeling a little bit tired after five games. We got one more for you. We're going to try to do our best to recharge here. Get a little coffee after this. I'll be, yeah, be good to go. A little, little caffeine will be, will be set for game five once it's this gonna one be, wraps up. It's going to be interesting, though, because it'll be a little bit more fun. Uh, I'll say this. It might be a little bit easier to discuss because we are going to see a list that we haven't seen on the stream yet. It's going to be a different archetype. The Vader do list. We're going to have a Vader do list to talk about. Exactly. We've had a lot of T-47s today. We've had a lot of T-47s versus droids. So eventually the jokes do run a little low. Okay, T-47 on the move, flying over that building. This is the one that does have the bomb. That, that still has a bomb attached. Time. Yeah. I'm curious if he's just dropping it there. He could drop it on that other enemy bomb carrier. He could. He could just drop it where he was. Right. That's also. Oh, did he drop it where he was? Joy's losing to Rebels is a new narrative. Yes, <laughs> that's definitely true, Dash. I think he's measuring for uh, that bomb drop right there, trying to make sure he's got a place to put it that's inside the uh, victory area. Or the. the Victory point scoring area, as we're trying to say. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's true of like, sort of historical rebel gun lines where you're just trying to slug it out, right? But these, these uh, aggressive armor skews are very different than what you normally see, or what you have historically seen. Clearly, very much in abundance now. Right. Okay, so Bruce is shooting a B1, I think, carrying a bomb. It's T47. For three. So much. <laughs> Some droids falling there to that impact of the. Uh, right, since you didn't need impact, that was three crits into the uh, cover for those B ones there. I got impacted by a gun. That's right. And now shooting the harpoon for free at the unit behind him. Did and doing a wound. <laughs> Disrespectful. Wounded, wounding with a harpoon, the massive disrespect. <laughs> so the interesting point there then is, is Maul the commander? Because uh, that's now two suppression on that droid trooper. Yeah, I or think... Or was the BX down at the back the commander? I'm not sure who, who got the commander token, but we might have nominated a B2 also. That is true. That'd be a 2 for his unit. Yeah, I think the 47 may have bop, dropped at the top of the act, dude. We think so. We think so. 
It's over there, so one assumes. Yeah, one is. Yeah, it's it's over there. It's going to be detonated over there. Uh, Big King Nasty, we are on round three, right? Uh, either three or four. I think four. I think we're about to head into four. Yeah. I'd be amazed if this was still round three. But it's been a very bloody game, very action-packed. Literally every activation has something to interact with, so I could believe round three. Nima, is that because he uh, dropped in and then did his ball screen? Oh, that's true. Oh, he dropped it last turn. Okay. Oh, okay. K2 enters melee and punches B1s with bombs for four hits. And those B1s do not save. K2 with a big fat slap, backhanded slap to those B1s. I forgot he was up there. Smacking them down. Not quite enough to uh, finish off that B1 unit carrying the bomb, though. Can you... I'm not sure they can drop off a withdrawal, though, right? No, you can't drop a bomb when you withdraw. Right, so that's good. That's, you, that's exactly what I was mentioning uh, earlier. Uh, if you have enough units alive still, you can just engage bomb carriers troop to troop. Droids do this all the time to other factions when they get bombing run with Stab Riders. They use their B1s as a tar pit. So in this case, we got K2 tar pitting, and you got, like, veterans tar pitting as well. Oh, they are dead. Okay, well, if they are dead, that's huge. That means a bomb carrier just got wiped, if that's the case. At least I hope so, if I'm reading the board correctly. It's getting tough to read. It is. Looks like these DRK droids are moving over towards the bomb down below. Okay, the dark droids are, are trying to pick it up. I'm not, ever, I'm not sure I've ever heard them describe his wobbies. Yeah. His wobbles. So is that because is that they sound they mix? Maybe. I would assume so. Maybe they're just loose on the flake stand since they spin around all the time. Yeah, that's that's are, also true. It is really annoying, like, between the flight stands and those, those little antennas. Yep. I've had two of my antennas break off. I ended up gluing one back on and just saying, this guy's the unit leader. <laughs> that's why I won't, like, play steps in a major tournament, because I just don't want to fly with them on their flight stands. Okay, a BX sniper just moved and cleaned up a Mark II with a sniper shot. And that's going to be... End of the round, he says, I'm going to blow it up. He doesn't hit anything, so Bruce scoring 2 VP now. So it's currently 2-0. It's 2-0 to, zero. It's it's two to, two to zero. for the Rebels, yeah. What a, great what a meme race. final this might be. <laughs> two, double T-47 versus triple Dubak. Who would have thought? <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> that's really interesting if that's going to be the case because, the, you know, clearly the dudes can't really hurt Sevens. They can't. But they can certainly run the entire rest of the list over. They can. <laughs> and so, like, if you get if you get some objective, like, recover the supplies, for example, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And clearly, uh, but even then, like, they can do bombing runs, so if, if Bobby Joe gets bombing run, it's still not a certain thing. Uh, KP might actually be preferable, because then you can play the attrition game and just hang back with your veterans. And bait the dudes forward. Like he wants like a short edge to short edge deployment with like a, a you know high high range game essentially to keep those dudes away. But new ways to motivate is pretty outstanding on do backs, especially with spur. And yeah, what's the threat range of the do backs? It's it's, uh, it's high, ways. very high. Uh, it's like 30 inches, 36 inches. It's very far. That's not the melee threat range, though. That's no, that's that's range. the that's the flamer threat range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will pull that up. So we got the Phantom Menace, interesting, versus Assault here on the next turn.
it's map and out, so the uh, speeds are moved to those five inches. Right. The do back is what, an inch and a half base? Yes. Two inches, somewhere in there? So roughly seven inches? I think it's like seven. I thought it was like seven point nine for do back. Okay, that's right, because they, the, they don't have the tiny little speeder base. They right. have the, they have the uh, medium base, RT right. base, yeah. Right, so the, yeah, it's like seven and a half. So we're looking at just under 23 inches. 20, yeah, 22 and a half inches, so not quite range four. But yeah, very close to it. That's pretty far. That's pretty far. Green scaly missiles just screaming across the board. Yeah, this game is not over yet. Um, though I think that 1v1 panicking with the bomb, that might be the game changer there. Yeah, definitely. Because if, if Bobby Joe still had that bomb claimed and he was just double moving towards his opponent's zone. Um, you know, there's no way that Cassian bomb is getting detonated. And now that R2's dead, that, that could, you know. Right. You could have a situation where Bobby Joe's practically tabled, but he still wins 3 2 in theory. Okay. Uh, dark droids are now hovering over the building with the bomb in tow. They, they picked it up with some sort of laser grappling thing. They don't have arms exactly, so <laughs> they must be like grappling onto it with a laser and trying to like move it themselves. It does look like that building might be tall enough to give them cover from the T-47, or at least the edges, the lips of the building. Okay, he just displaced his own K-2 with his speeder movement. You didn't? Okay. Okay, he didn't displace it? All right. I thought you did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they can claim. Um, if you're incognito, you can still perform the objective action. Uh, they just lose incognito when they do it. You can't like voluntarily drop incognito to like score on intercept or something like that. Right. T-47 pivots and throws at the dark droids. Like that's open. It's gonna be a dead. They're dead. It's dead dark droids because they only have three wounds. Yeah. Rip. Those things do melt. They, they melt quickly. They use cotton, yeah. Yep. And that bomb is now neutral. Which is a problem because he's gonna have a hard time getting something that's up there. That's a big problem. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Dubacks have won the other game. Federal Andy. Oh, did that have cover? Uh, uh, what happened? I don't think so. Uh, never mind. They were talking about something else. I think they had to claim and move. I don't think they started the turn with that bomb, did they? Oh. I think that's correct. Yeah, I think they had to move. They moved with hover and claimed it. Because K2 got smacked. Or K2 smack is the ones I had it before. Right. Yeah, so that bomb is neutral. B1 shooting T47 for nothing. Shoot and move. Yeah, Federale Andy, it is. It's looking like that way more and more as this game goes on. That the finals will be a T47 versus Vader Zubax. We pop to our side camera. Maybe we can see what's going on over there. I know it's a little congested there. Uh, okay. Yeah, the focus isn't that great, unfortunately.
to aim shot. Looks like it. BX droid takes it and yep, dies. BX. Ouch. A lot of dead units on uh, on Blood Ocean side of the board, unfortunately. Yeah, those T-47s are doing work. They really are. T-47s and Mark IIs, especially Mark IIs in the late game here, have yep. been doing a lot of work. I was just about to say those Mark IIs that have hung around with one wound left on them have been... Yeah. They've, been they've been cleaning up. FC shooting again into the airspeeder for no damage and moving out again. Unfortunately, just kind of spinning its wheels now with the AI. Yeah, unfortunately, here. yeah. I mean, nothing else to shoot except armor. Right. Losing that T-Series was really big. That, that was a very smart move to really just kill the order control for yeah. the rest of the turn. It makes the CIS the much weaker. This is that two-man that squad. It's going to be two hits. Oh, yeah. a bunch of Another mall. mall wound, it looks like. Mall getting punched again. Again. <laughs> now he's on four out of six. So mall down to two health. Veterans surging hit. They're like stormtroopers in yeah. melee. Stormtroopers are terrifying and boxers. Stormtroopers actually can hit you. It's Especially pretty... when they get precise for their one time they whip. Yeah. Yep. And they hit pretty hard. Yeah, we rolled those threes to search for dice. Right. Karab Maga Stormtroopers. Yeah. No, it's Terrace Kazi. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> for those of you that know the video game Masters of Terrace Kazi, the, uh, it's an old Star Wars fighter, 2D okay. fighter. There you go, Terrace Kazi. Yep. You are speaking French to me right now. I know Kung Fu. Hey, it was in Solo as well. Okay, that's true. It was in the Solo movie. So, is K2 charging on this turn? I, I hope so. I hope I don't know if K2 can get to Maul in one move. I yeah, think he's, he's got gonna, a double move to get there. It looks he's like. going to charge something else, I think. Says he's gonna shoot red. Okay. Okay, two crits on the tac droid from the B2 squad. No oh, on the red, never mind, on the B1s. Pierce one and two B1s are gonna die. And so just gain two suppression? And gain two suppression. So whittling away. And then moving into melee now after shooting with a B2, a B2 unit with the tag turret and a single model left. So just tying them up, keeping them from shooting again. Right, 
right? Because that, well, you know, obviously the firepower for the V2 is in that heavy weapon, but that's still yep. sticking around. Locking still, up that rocket. Three red dice and a white die is, is nothing to sneeze at. Yep. K2 can, can do some significant damage to those V2s next round if they, if they have the time. Like a force push here from the mall. Yep. That's what it appears. Mall force pushes those veterans away. Looks like he's gonna probably move and drop this bomb. I think that might be. It could be a, a move drop. Move drop move. Move drop move maybe. That won't get him out of range though. Reaction drop and then move away. But it does get him close enough to do that Cassian bomb steal. Oh does. yeah, it does. It's going to be unfortunate when Cassian shoots him off the table here. <laughs> yeah, yeah Cassian, just, Cassian could also just blow himself up right? <laughs> if he wanted to. Oh, this is true. Yeah. A little suicide vest action. <laughs> hey, he was born in this fight. He's been in this fight since he was six years old. Wouldn't he be, like, is it every bomb that you detonate or every bomb that is detonated within your point? So if you're a point of every group point. Uh... I think the wording is such that you can't game it like that. I think it's you, you stuff that you detonate. I don't think you can own goal. You can't own goal, can you? You can. You can? Yeah. Oh, never mind then. So, so the wording is uh, for every bomb that is detonated within range one of your deployment zone, your opponent gets a victory point. Oh, so you can't do that to yourself. You'll you'll score an own goal. Yes. Well, that would be unfortunate. That would be very unfortunate. So uh, <laughs> scratch that. It w it's cool, but it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> it's the ultimate flex to say that I'm still going to win. I'm still going to do this. I'm going to score my. I'm going to score an own goal and still walk away with a win. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here goes Cassian with the sniper. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep, two on Maul. Double block. Double block. Ooh, that's big. Probably should have shot with his pistol there. Flip flip the config and shoot the pistol. No, just use the pistol to cast No, just use the covert blaster. Oh, yeah. He's got because that range too, covert. He's got the extra die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With yeah. the name and marksman, it's a pretty good chance that you're still going to get two you hits. Get three hits. Yeah, yeah, if you roll like red, if you roll like the red hit, white hit, blank, white, then you can convert to three. Right. A lot of people forget that that gun is even on him. That's true. two surges it is that's game that's game all right so we're gonna have double t47 vader triple dues in the finals wow maul just uh blew himself up with his own bomb <laughs> that's a very honorable way to go yeah and he had to detonate that because you can only detonate one bomb a turn yep he had to detonate it because otherwise he couldn't score so Quite an ending to the to a wild game, I would say. Very mobile uh, battlefield here. And really, the uh, the veteran punching being the difference there. I think they did two wounds to Maul. The, yeah, the did, veterans did two did. wounds to Maul, and that was absolutely massive. A nerf Maul, clearly. <laughs> I don't think Maul needs a nerf. I think other things in C about CIS need a nerf, and then Maul is fine. Well, I'm going to step away to see if I can accelerate this table move. Yeah, we're going to change tables, everybody. Stay tuned, we're gonna go to the Be Right Back screen. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Kyle, for co-casting, I appreciate it. Are you sticking around? Uh, yeah, I'll stick around. Okay, sweet. All right, so thanks everyone. We'll be back for round three in a little while. Stay tuned. It's only three o'clock, I'll have time to get some pool after this. Yeah. <laughs>